Greetings and salutations, friends. And Happy New Year's! Welcome to 2024. It will be a time of adventure, no doubt. Now, why would you do that little background thingy? I don't see why you would need to do that. There you go. I hope that didn't... No, no, it looks like it didn't do any permanent damage. Well, that's nice, at least. Highly beneficial, right. Well, that will be able to run happily in the background, then, as we get into Rogue Trader. Boy, oh boy. Boy, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a year. It's gonna be a year. Oh God. <laughs> Let's hope that I manage to uh, finish up Rogue Trader before the channel is uh, inevitably banned, and before everyone else about channels is banned. I imagine they'll just, you know, take YouTube offline at some point in the future, just just to make sure they get absolutely everyone simultaneously. You know. I imagine that'll be the uh, the quickest and easiest solution. Lord Captain, we have received a transmission from Foulstone. That's a place to name your base to. It was sent by members of the Order of the Hammer, votaries of St. Cognatius, whose monastery is the only settlement on the planet. Or rather, it used to be. Some time ago, a transport vessel, the Navica, unloaded several thousand refugees from a planet belonging to Rogue Trader Winterskill. The Order of the Hammer has judged this invasion to be an act of aggression, and is asking for your lordship's protection. As they should. Hmm, these people are victims, not invaders. Oh, they're immigrants. It's much the same thing. This is of no interest to me. No, no, no. Fear not, clergyman. We will protect you from the vileness of the immigrant. As it pleases, your lordship. Six score and eleven days after the feast of the passing of Nicomedes Kifi, the champion of faith, disquietude marred the calm of the monastery of the Order of the Hammer. Countless tortured souls steeped in fear arrived on Foulstone in a star bark. A great apostasy has befallen their home and turned them into abject wanderers seeking help and refuge. Their wicked and cruel captain, the owner of the Navika, had betrayed them. Once the unknowing souls in his care had made landfall on the world's surface, he most devilishly recalled his shuttles and left, thus ridding himself of his duty of care for the unfortunate lot. Not knowing how they would survive in Foulstone's grim wastelands, the Forsaken people came to the monastery of St. Cognatius, and there they surrounded its walls. They hammered their fists on its gate and implored and wailed, Take us in! Protect us! And what once was a place of serenity and grace was now full of din, disorder, and all manner of things despicable. Why? Must the immigrants always bring the despicable with them? Can they not leave it at home? Can they not bring something nice for once, these doctors and engineers <laughs> hammering at our walls? <laughs> Damn. The interlopers brought with them worldly futility and strife. Prelate Hectarius recalled the first missionaries to set foot on Falstone's vast wasteland, led by their seal for serving St. Cognatius, and those missionaries had received the blessing of Nicomedes Kifi, the champion of faith who had travelled with them in their star bark, to found in this place a humble and pure abode wherein to cultivate wisdom and piety. And St. Cognatius, a man of great endeavours, a warrior and a wise artificer, never cowered behind the walls of a librarium, but stepped bravely into the darkness, carrying light in the palm of his hand. And he commanded the others to do the same. And not only Foulstone, but many other worlds of the Corona's expanse, bears its imprint. 
The brethren and sisters of the Order of the Hammer came forth to meet the strangers, carrying water and protein evictulas and medicinal herbs and jugs of Prometheum. But the crowd came to blows over the viands, and blood was spilt. Many were trampled and mauled in the stampede, some of them dwellers of the monastery. Then the warriors of the Orders of the Hammer donned their flat cowls, inscribed words of praise to the god emperor on their tactical visors. Seems like a bad place to put it, considering you're needing to be seeing through that, but details, details. And went forth, ready to render service in battle with las guns and bolters. They pierced the interlopers. With their chain swords and power flails, they struck them, and a great and bloody harvest was reaped that day. But the interlopers, too, scant though their armament was, and scanter their skill in battle, slew many among the monastery's dwellers, for great were their numbers and greater their desperation. The monks fled beyond their walls, and rang the vox alarum, and shut the gate, and commanded the armed guards to keep watch over that gate, slaying any who approached. A quarrel broke out. The hungry and the sick lay siege to the monastery. Begging for help in their spite, they blocked the water collector, and unpowered the denatorum. The faithful in the meantime made ready to resist. And a miracle came to pass. The god emperor sent his champion, his confidant, his right hand, the rogue trader of the blessed house von Falendius. May the light of his grace remain upon it forever. The blessed rogue trader bombed both parties from orbit, just to take the piss out of the storyteller. I mean, it's obvious which are the good guys here, isn't it? The all-male collective of good, honest, and pious priests or the highly diverse group of vile, filthy, dirty immigrants who assaulted their fastness, who bit the hand that fed them. <laughs> it is such on the rock, yes. Alright, well, these come to the deeds. Boring for to fall upon the interlopers, this man yes, could be slain. <laughs> Strident. Iconoclastics then avail of protection of the interlopers, take them into his care, and thereby of all foul stone with them. Of all, of all foul stone. Hmm. Heretical, unless the army falls within the and monks alike, wrecking great shedding of blood and pillage for his delication. Cast contented eye on the aftermath of the bloodshed and departed with words of abuse and reproach. I don't mind. I don't mind at all. Abuse and reproach are my middle names, you will find. I mean, I extend a veil to take them into this care and thereby of all foul stone with them. What, claim the entire planet? I mean, tempting. Definitely tempting. I was to hold each accountable for their deeds. That's not bad either. But, uh, the immigrants must pay for their actions. Mm, yes. Yes, they must. I do believe this is, uh, and engage with your audience kind of decision. Let's see. One, and two, and three, and I mean, let's, let's throw in four there as well for a little bit of spice, I suppose. There we are. And on the reminder of the, uh, the public frontage, let's see. Uh, Idira is currently going to die when the option comes up. Chat has so declared, with a rather overwhelming lead in donations towards kill Idira, so she is unlikely to be saved at this point in time. The Space Wolf is still to be left to the uh, non-too-tender mercies of his uh, captors by, I believe, uh, a grand total of nine dollary dues. And I guess we've got the Xenos today as well. That'll maybe be today's big decision, whether or not we pick up the Xenos wench from the Agri world. The Eldar Sniper. Hmm. Well, Fenry44 decides that he, uh, he knows what's best here. There is two euros that says get more servants by choosing the three option. All right. That is Iconoclast then. So that is a donation for Iconoclast. And in this capitalist world of ours, of course, 
This overrides, uh, <laughs> overrides democracy. Uh, Thomas Dobbs, ten dollars. Side with the refugees, three. Okay, all right. Well, three is as uh, looking like it. I shrouded ten dollars. Money talks there. Here, I will force you to be nice to the immigrants. All right, I'm presuming that's three you're referring to then. Uh, so, yep, it looks like three is the option. And Monkey Dice has been a member for 11 Harris months. Thank question. you very much. Behold, answer. I don't know what's <laughs> going on, but I'm here. That is enough. That is more than enough. Fenry 44, 10 euros. Arch gets his puppy. Ah, there you go. I do believe that uh, puts the puppy in the lead, indeed. Good, good. All right. Capitalism has spoken, it seems. It, well, we are going to be going with Iconoclast today. I have, I have lost. Let's see how it was in the public vote. 20% uh, to 52. Hmm. Well, second most popular option. Very well, very well. Remember, capitalism always Fire's defeats. <laughs> <laughs> see, I was, <laughs> I, I, I was about to say always defeats democracy when it comes to the dollar, but uh, let's not begin talking about purchasing elections just yet. We'll save that until, oh, I don't know, November or something. <laughs> Iconoclast it is. Thank you very much for your generous donations. Extend a veil or protection over the interlopers, take them so into his care, and thereby all of Foulstone with them. We are a kind and generous lot here in the Archcast chat. The rat bricks have hearts larger than their bodies, which may indeed mean that they will also die a terrible, terrible death at the hands of repeated and catastrophic heart failure, but that is a problem for the rat bricks of tomorrow, not today. Humbly, the Order of the Hammer heeded the God Emperor's confidant, and unsealed the airlocks, and opened the gates of its abode, and brought forth gifts of virtue to relieve the suffering of the ill-stricken. Let's see if the immigrants behave. After a prayer, the architects set to work, in accordance with the saints' teachings and the parameters set forth in the standard template construct. They erected a spacious living quarters, oh, spacious, you are too kind, and sturdy fort walls for the planetary militia, and a spacious auditorium wherein to trade and store goods, and a proud sensorum within whose walls clerks and servo bondsmen would maintain order and keep statistical records. And a new, yet righteous, way of life came to Foulstone, and the people rejoiced, and all was good. We have become good people today. Uh, Honky Kong, $10, bring aboard the pet furry. Well, that definitely puts the Get the Space Marine in the leads then. Good, good, we will, we will have a fluffy furry today. Well, probably not today. I think that's in a later act, but you get the idea. Right. Um, for St. Drutus. Infernical. Two-handed flamer. Oh, God, that damage. Holy shit. I mean, it, it's only shoots in a straight stream, but holy Jesus. Um, the Emperor's Retribution feature. Power shield selector. I mean, I mean that then that, that ain't even an option. Now nah, heavy flamer hands get the heavy flamer hands. Hands gets the heavy flamer. Whoosh whoosh whoosh. <laughs> hands. He's hands name. You can remote account. You can manage your colonies remotely. Wow. Imagine that. Remote colonial management in the far-flung future of the 41st millennium. An absolutely diddly dick nothing. Very well, then. The red planet uh, also holds absolutely nothing. 
And uh, squiggle, have, squiggle, have squiggle, lost. squiggle contains bars of something or other. Yes, mind them. The name is familiar. I've seen it somewhere in my observer's reports. Have you now? I think I know what was in the report, esteemed interrogator, but it is probably best if I don't say it aloud. Ah. Somebody else's misfortune is my good gracious good. Good. I suppose I should actually end the poll at some point as well. Good point. Uh, Sven Hallgren, 100 Swedish kronos, you should just keep her as a sanctioned Xenos. Believe me, she suffers more that way. On the other hand, gatekeep. Gatekeep always. Do gatekeep always, as yes. I have, I have lost. I presume that then is for keeping Xenos pet. Okay. I presume. Keep the Xenos as a pet. And real horse edit. Hi Arch, happy new years. Did you like the latest clip? I don't think I've seen it yet, Holtzy. I'll give it a look uh, after the stream. I'll tell you this though, it's been some busy little days. Oh God. Uh, genuinely, I feel like, I feel like every single solitary year, everything gets busier, doesn't I have, it? I have lost. More stuff to do. More, more stuff. More endless stuff. Why must things become more and not lesser? Hmm. Speaking of more and not lesser... What do I want to do? So that gives me one point. I kind of want to save... Okay, so that's, that's a slightly dangerous route, but I'm going to risk it. Because I don't want to spend the the point on making the unsafe safe just yet. Because I'm going to need to go back here. Because this seems to be like a little bit of a hub system with lots of stuff surrounding it. Voxmaster Vigdis, Lord Captain, we have an emergency. We have received word that there has been a sighting on the lower decks. A sighting of Lady Theodora. Da -da 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 -da. That's not the right song, but you know it. The message we have received are incomplete and vague, little more than yelling and hysterical claims. They are our reports of casualties and unrest. The compartment in question has already been sealed off, but I thought you might want to look into what's going on for yourself. The situation is delicate, and what especially is disturbing, there are mentions of Idira Tlas being present at the scene. Disgusting. What is Idira doing there? Idira broke her microbead, so I wasn't able to find out anything from her. But Lord Captain, Idira is a psyker, and we are in the warp. You are the only one who would risk setting foot in that compartment, and if you do not, if you do not, we will never see Idira again. I beg you, Lord Captain, do not ignore this matter. Very well, we shall deal with it personally. Alright, let's, uh, watch the world to pray Jay on this one for now. Oh god, Fenrir, uh, 44, 70 dollars or euros to keep Idira alive. Oh god. Well, this is an 11th hour upset, isn't it? 11th hour upset indeed. Hmm, how very, very terrible. How very, very terrible indeed. Maybe, maybe Dira will be allowed to keep breathing for a while longer. A job for me. Appears to be in working order. Oh no. None shall stand in my way. Hmm, ghosts in the lower decks. Unsanctioned psychers prowling. Heresy is the question. Fire is the answer. <laughs> and who now deigns to grace us with their presence? Another gaggle of heretics and traitors thirsting to get their due for what they've done? Or is it the leader himself who has finally grown tired of hiding behind others? Heresy we meet at last. Fire I have grown tired answer. of waiting for you to pay me a visit. Indeed, centuries of selfless toil and effort and everything I left behind has gone to this non-entity. Warp illusion! Be gone. Argento, my dear, there's no need to make such a fuss. Why don't we sit down over a cup of recaf like we used to? I'll listen to your rapturous tales of sacred relics, portents, and your special path. 
You must have been so lonely without me here. No one else willing to listen to your ravings or help you with your childish treasure hunt. Throne, spare us from the cursed apparitions of the arch enemy. Is that what you are truly praying for? I can hear how fast your heart is pounding, Viserion. I think deep down you hope this apparition never ends. What are you? What, you ask? You dare say that to me, little boy. I am Theodora von Valencius Massimo Afscaras, rogue trader of the Imperium and commander of this void ship. Alas, my glorious voyage through life was ended in the dullest possible way. My death, a nuisance I staved off for as long as I could. But do not weep for me, my boy. I am still keeping an eye on my property and punishing all those who failed me. You are not Theodora. You are a monster. I'm dead? How is that? I am no different from those who have not yet crossed the divide between reality and eternity. I see, I speak. I remember the wrongs you all committed against me, and for all those who failed me, I have already begun exacting my retribution. I truly am, Theodora. The remnant of herself that she left behind in this world. I am an echo of her memories preserved in the minds of those who cared for her. I am the taste of tears spilt for the unsaid and the undone. I am the terror of she who failed to turn the tide of fate and who refused to look truth in the face. I am as real as the human passion that brings worlds to ruin. No, no, you're far too vociferous to be Theodora. She was far more of a bitchy kind of character. Who really killed you? Service Good question. Oh, wouldn't you like to know the answer to that question? I don't even know which would be more satisfying. To give you an honest answer or leave you to languish in your ignorance? We'll see how you conduct yourself, little boy. A demon don't know. What do you want with me? Matters are so dire that the pleas of one of my servants breached death's veil to reach my ears. How could I ignore such a desperate cry for help? And for my little Idira, no less. And once I appeared here, of course, I had to meet the pretender who has allowed this deplorable state of affairs. Ah. It was Idira, that damned wench, who opened the veil and caused all of this misery to begin with, huh? All right, well, I don't know if I like that very much at all. No, not at all. Hmm, Idira, the wench, the traitor, the evil woman. She has caused great suffering and great danger to our spaceship today. Yes, indeed, yes, indeed. Let's see, speaking of uh, Thomas Dobbs, five dollars, Idira will be shown mercy this day. Oh, God. I do believe that puts the mercy option uh, $15 ahead. My God. What have you done with Idira? Me? What have I done with Idira? All I did was turn that little mutt from the fringes into a true servant of the Imperium. I gave her toys. I cleaned up after her antics. I proved, provided her with everything she could ever dream of. Oh, I had great plans for poor little Idira. I will send you back into the abyss, monster. You? Of all the people to ever threaten me, you are the most pathetic boy. All that you possess now was given to you in error. You are unworthy of such a generous gift, and you are incapable of holding on to it. I am here to seek retribution against all who failed me. My brainless crew, my useless officers, my pathetic servants, who turned their backs on their mistress in her darkest hour. And most of all, you, my dear heir. You who have undeservedly claimed the warrant and everything else that is mine. I will drag it all to the warp with me, including you. I'll lay claim to the stars. My so, house would be proud of me. Whatever Idira summoned forth, I think it's pretty about pretty pretty ninety-eight percent certain it's not Theodora. First and foremost, because the soul of anything that enters the warp will be devoured Victory very, awaits. very, very quickly. And very, very viciously as well. But secondly, she speaks in two generalistic terms. I mean, my dear heir, heir for example. Lead. She didn't know me at all. Like, I'd, I'd just arrived by the time that all of this happened. We didn't have a relationship. And if she truly was Theodora, she'd probably prey more on Viserion. 
who she could maybe even turn, as Adelblad had the hots for that chick for some mysterious reason. And she'd definitely be using Argenta a little bit more as well. I think Idira has simply managed to summon herself a little None demon. Shall stand in my way. Perhaps not so little either. And Fenry 44, 30 euros. Keep the psyche a pet. She can be potty trained. <laughs> right, well, that clenches it. I think that puts uh, Idira $40 in the safe range then. I have, I have lost. Why won't you look at your captain, Idira? Oh, who knows? It's wrong. It's all wrong. I tried to bring the dead back to life and it didn't work. Wow. If only every story in the entire history of mankind had warned me against this course of action. If only I had known that trying to bring demonic entities onto the ship would not actually resurrect the dead. <laughs> if only, Idira. If only you. Vile, yet unfortunately safe, Psyker scum. Lord Captain, no, wait. Lord Captain, Lady Von Valencius, you, you came back. Poor little Idira, there, there. How could I not come? You were crying for me so desperately. That could be misinterpreted. Oh well. Your plea is carried to the very depths of the warp itself. Why didn't you save me? Why didn't you warn me? Answer me, you insignificant wretch! I'll drag the answers out of you myself. I... I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything that could have had anything to do with you. I am sorry, Lord Captain, I failed! Ah! Damage taken, Idira 11! Idira is dying. It is a very, very unfortunate course of events. Argenta wordlessly swings her weapon up and aims at Adira, who is struggling in the monster's hold. Sister of Battle looks at her with a, without an ounce of doubt or mercy. And uh, Ben says, I got a really bad feeling. What if Theodora was a Fianite heretic? The kind that even the Xanthites thinks are batshit insane and kill on sight. She was definitely engaged with some shit she was not supposed to be messing around with. That, at least, is absolutely certain right there. Right. Last chance, chat. <laughs> Last chance, indeed. Fenrir44, pretty much single-handedly, has uh, managed to turn this around in Idira's favor. To stop Argenta. If anyone wishes to dispute it, it's, uh, I believe, $30 about now. Rough conversions in my head. Ahead. So I'll give you a few moments, and then we will have to save Idira. I know, it's terrible, but there we are. Well, Sven Hallgren, she actually outs herself by saying that she's the memories of those that Service knew Theodora. Good point. She's just a lesser emanation of Zinch in disguise. See, I didn't catch on to that, but that's a good point. She is the memories of those who knew Theodora. In other words, she's not even claiming to be Theodora herself. She is claiming to be a manifestation, a reflection of those around her. Instead, it's a very good catch. All right, it looks like Adira is alive. Also, okay, what we're gonna do? Oh, I missed that from Argray. Sorry, Streamlabs. Uh, welcome to the new year of 2024 from our Lord and Savior Birth. Also, Hi Fi Rush Stream Fund. God damn it. I think that one's actually reached like $30 now. Let me just. Uh, There you go. Oh, there, God damn it. Now it's become an actual fund and I hate it. It looks like Idira is going to live. Oh. <laughs> Stuff the psyche, do your duty from Night Shroud, $50. And Idira will become your servant today. Thomas Doves, $5. All right. We're, uh, we're back to killing Idira by $25. Uh, $25. 
God damn it. Okay. Service guarantees citizenship. We're we keep going here, aren't we? We are continuing to do go. go. <laughs> Ferry forty four, keep the pet sixty euros. Nope. No, you did are still alive. God help me. Psycho Psy Star, ten dollars and her madness. Oh god. Alright, that puts death ahead by, I think, thirty, thirty-five dollars. Good cost. Um, no, it's, it's, it's thirty, isn't it? Because you're, you're... I, which one is... I need the currency convert thing. I'm actually working on a system that will do this automatically for me, without me will be needing to be bothered. Fire is the I think that puts us thirty dollars in the safe zone. Also, also, those of you who are donating today, um, you can reach out to me on either Discord uh, or on Twitter, if you have the, uh, the Twitter Premium thingy, uh, with your receipts or just like a screenshot of your thing or whatever, and I'll commission some rat bricks for you, because this has been a fierce bidding war and I feel like you deserve a little, Heresy a small question. little reward Fire for your, your efforts today. <laughs> Both sides, both sides. Everyone who donates for this gets a little rat break. I think you deserve it. I think so. Your own little custom PNG. A, uh, what was that worth that? NFT? I have, I have lost. NFT, is that the correct term? Yes. Each NFT is, of course, worth an average of $5,000, of course. Uh, I say so. And therefore, in accordance with the rules of NFT, therefore, that's how it is. You know? I believe, I believe that's how it works. I'll add a Discord link in the uh, description below as well, so you can contact me uh, me there, else I'll be on that server. You're probably going to have to be in the quarantine tank for about a day, but after you've been in there for a day, you should get into the main server, and then you can see me there and send me a contact too. Right. I, have, I think have lost. we're there. I think we have arrived at a conclusion. I'll give you precisely oh, one more minute. Minute. Timothy Lerox, thirteen ninety nine Canadian. A little something for the new year and to start for Dark Eldar Waifo. Oh God, you're gonna make me have sex with the Dark Eldar, are you? God damn. Ah, that. Oh God, sex with the. Dark Eldar. I think he's a man, too. Oh, God. Right, I'm penitently officially starting a Arch is going to be gay fund. Is the question. Fire is the answer. <laughs> I knew these bidding wars were a terrible idea, but at least they'll lead to, <laughs> lead to good content, I guess. Homosexual sex on Arch's channel in 2024. Have, you did not lost. think you could it could possibly happen, but it is. Ebenezer sixteen ninety two dollars. Deal with her. Uh, kill Idara another twenty euros. That brings it Harrison down to eight. Fire is the answer. Eight dollars, I think, for twelve k dear, fifteen Norwegian crones, which I think is what four four four, four and a half, well, we'll call it five. And that brings it down to four dollars lead to keep Idira so alive. Keeping Idira sure. alive is in the lead with four dollars. God help me. Right, I need to like have a stopwatch here. Heresy is the question. Fire right. is the answer. One minute. <laughs> One minute. I'll start. I'll start the stopwatch. Then we'll have to keep it moving on. This has been a fierce. Is bidding war. Heresy is the question. Fire is the answer. <laughs> Shoot me dead. Two dollars. Humanity's racial superpower is breedability slash wall. I I take it that's kill. That's uh, what two dollars safe. End the voodoo lady. It's a mercy. Two pounds. That's at least equivalent to two dollars and slightly more. I think. I think kill Idira is in the lead with cents now. <laughs> Uh, Western Civilization, I'd like to see you on Heels v. Babyface show. Now, what would the Inquisition do? What would the Inquisition do? I think the Inquisition would shoot her. I, I unironically think the Inquisition 
would just shoot her. And he's a submissive Dark Eldar, which is like meeting a pacifist orc. Okay. Well, I still don't know about the prospect of having sex with him, but if you insist, chat, if you insist, chat insists. Like, yes, you, you will have sex with the Eldar. <laughs> Ferry 4400 euros. I will win, the pet will live. God help me, dude. Uh, I, I think Fenrir has earned himself a very a special chat break. A bigger chat break than any chat break that has ever been before. And Sweden, 100 Keeper, it's funnier to give her to <laughs> Heinrichs. Is that an option? And Fincam, uh, 100 Mexican. I, MX? MXs? I have no idea what that is. <laughs> uh, Jonathan Phillips, spare her, but only so she can be slapped through jelly. For her nonsense. Purge Idira. Oh Jesus. Alright, well I have I have lost. I think I think we'll have to call it there. I think Fenrir 44 is gonna have to get his way. We've uh, we've dragged it out long enough. A fierce I have I have lost a fierce fight. A tremendously fierce fight. By far the fiercest whatever we've ever seen here now. But I think Fenrir is gonna get his wish. To let our gentle live. I'm I'm tempted to just I can't save here, but I've got an auto save. I'm gonna make sure she lives. We're calling it there. No further donations, please. Thank you very much for your participation. But Idira will be with us for a while longer. Argenta Stop. Reach out your hand and push the bolter away. Argenta wrinkles her nose at you, or shouted command, and lowers the weapon by a few centimeters, but she does not put it away. Oh god, tense duties. I'm surprised she listened. <laughs> I, then again, I did let her keep her orphans. She does owe me for the orphans. She does. I have, I have lost. <laughs> Attack Theodora. Okay, or I'll shoot you myself. Coercion minus 20. 65, Persuasion. I am your captain, Idira. Listen to me. Service Kill it. <laughs> I, I like that option. Like, Argenta, put down your gun. Why, sir? I want to do it myself. <laughs> no, Idira. I am your captain, I have, wench. I have lost. Shit. Lord, captain. Damn it. Chaos will devour you. It will devour everyone responsible for my death. Die. Die for the delection of my lord! Oh my! It turns out it wasn't Theodora after all! I have, I Plot have twist! Chaos was evil all along! <laughs> Alright. Fenrir 44 has saved Idira's life. Now Fire we must save it one more time by making sure she doesn't die horribly. Right, Adelblad, you'll take the warp beast. Heinrichs, uh, you've got our back. You've got to deal with all of those angry so workers. Argenta, I still need to get you your new flamer ASAP. Um, actually, Jay, you be up there and play with those two. And Cassia can be up here with me, all snuggly-wuggly. Again, yeah, remember, anyone who partook in today's, uh, today's bid war, send me a message on Twitter or Discord, and I'll, play, and I'll set you up with your own little custom uh, avatar. And, of course, anything you want, so long as it isn't completely violating the TOS, is all fine. So whatever you want it to be, I'll have it made. All right, what are we? What are we doing here? What are we doing here? Who's got a good shot? I'm worried about that one. I think Jay's gonna need to try and. Oh boy, that's a lot of hit points, huh? Oh Jesus! Okay. Well, Jay. Good job, Jay. Good job. That that really helped out. Thank you. That's wonderful. Absolutely great, Jay. You you prove yourself a valuable addition to my crew every day you do. Truly, 
Truly you do. And I'm not just saying that because you just flubbed like 60 shots point blank range at a literally iridescently glowing blue monster or anything. No, no, no. Those those are my... That's my honest, uh, honest, honest opinion of you. Truly, truly. Motherfucker. Alright. Well, that does complicate things. Just a tiny little smidge. Um... Right. I should have buffed first, actually. Better, better. Not good, but better. Getting a little bit of hit points there. And, uh, Argenta taking. Alright, I really want to pick these off if I have at all the ability to do so, so we're going to give that a look deeply into my eyes. There we go. That's one down. Idira still fine. Good. I'm not accustomed to being ordered around. Henrik. Isn't this a job for the serfs? Hmm. Plasma overcharge. Extra damage. Yeah, I'll be fair for two turns. That's actually fine, I think, because uh, I'm going to be in melee in a moment from now anyways, so whether I can't fire my plasma weapon or not is not really actually all that much of a problem. Well, damn. All right, idea. Don't get Make sure you block you that thing properly, please. An animal blood. Prepare yourself, little warp beastie. You're about to get smacked like no warp entity has ever been smacked. I just did the AoE thing, didn't I, for some mysterious reason. I think I did. Right. Screw it. We're, we're gonna go a bit of DPS on this thing. Oh boy. Oh boy, it is. It is tough, isn't it? Jesus. It's a rare creature indeed that can stand up to Adelbard and only lose a quarter of its health. God help me. Okay, good, good. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Get in a nice little line there, so I may shoot you all simultaneously. Idira shocks herself. Good job, woman. Excellent. Quite impressive. I heard somebody was trying to make a Grenadier build in this game, and I gotta admit, that is an intriguing idea, isn't it? Like fighting almost exclusively with grenades. I need to use more grenades. I don't really use enough grenades. And I can charge. Would I like to? I feel like Argenta's got that one. Yeah, I really don't want to be using any psychic powers around here. We'll just... We'll, we'll leave him be. Can I get a slightly better angle? Yes, yes I can. Right, full auto, here we go. Bunka, 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 bunka. Alright, 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 not bad, not bad. Worker scum. I can see the mutations on you. The sign of heresy writ large upon your pathetic wriggling forms. Hmm. Come on, Jay. You are the thing that stands between me and the monsters of Zeech. Oh, 
maybe... Uh... No, no good line nukes targets here. Continue plunking away at those. We get another sniper shot. That might be enough. Yes, it is. Lovely. That makes my rear line pretty nice and secure. Warp Beastie to my rear is still a concern, but it faces Adelblad. It cannot do damage to that which cannot die. Right, it did, uh. I can do that with the you gotta reload that pistol of yours. Hmm. Even with smoke, I've got a pretty good shot. Well, except for that bolt that went off into the stratosphere somewhere. Adelblark. Adelblark. Oh, softer now, aren't you? Yes. I'm thinking killing those other two has... Uh, Made your pulpy little flesh far more mm, malleable. Yes. Now, now, Idira, please no more electric shocks. The uh, the veil between worlds are, you know, weak enough as it is. San Dumas, any thoughts on DW bringing back the old Bretonnia and Tomb King the models as a box set? I personally like the simplicity, the the older models to the new. Like the simplicity of the older models to the new. Uh, right, so I actually have a lot of opinions on this particular thing right here. I've been debating with myself whether or not to make a video on it as well, honestly. As... I've got a fair few opinions on the new box set. So, on the one hand, I am all for GW finally bringing back the old world, obviously. They, they should never have killed it in the first place. Like, it, it did not deserve to die. And it certainly did not deserve to die in the way that it did die. But, I am not convinced by the way they're bringing it back. So, the choice of Bretonnia and Tomb Kings, that I do like. Because I feel like the Tomb Kings and Bretonnia, they're a bit of an old classic foe combination, aren't they? The Crusading Knights, of course, and then the Undead Skeletons with a bit of Middle Eastern vibe to them, you know? That's, that's a good choice of theme. I like it. I like it. One of my favorite battle reports in old school... Uh, Heresy's the question in old school uh, White Dwarf was indeed one between Bretonnia and the uh, Tomb Kings. Because they've got a very interesting dynamic between them. You've got a very fast, very charged focused faction, and you've got another surprisingly fast faction in the Tomb Kings that focuses heavily on magic. Whereas the Bretonians, of course, they don't have much in the way of magic nearly at all. And what magic they do have is largely defensive in the blessings of the lady and so on. So I think that's a very good choice. There are, however, several things I strongly dislike about the new model lineup. Um, first and foremost, when it comes to the Bretonians, I haven't really seen too much about the, um, the, 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 the uh, Tomb Kings that have perturb me particularly but i really don't like the new bretonians because it seems to me to be emblematic of the biggest issue with the resurgence of the old world namely that gw doesn't really know what the old world is anymore can i hope for you that i can spat because the bretonians don't look like bretonians they don't have individual heraldry anymore. Now you have uniformly uh, armed squads where they all use the same insignia. They all use the same color pattern. They all use the same style of like armor and representation. And this is just not Bretonnia. In Bretonnia, 
Every night is an individual night. Every night has his own heraldry. He has his own history. He has his own reason for becoming a knight. They are all warrior elite individuals. There should be no uniformity amongst the knights of the realm of Britonia. And the fact that there is... Uh, you could argue that maybe the painting team got lazy, I guess, but... <laughs> That's not a very good argument. Like, why is this way? This way? Oh, you know, the painting team just got fucking lazy, yo. Oh, that's that's not a good reason. That is, in fact, an absolutely terrible reason. A near uniquely terrible reason, actually. And it seems, again, that the more likely reason is because GW has forgotten what Warhammer is. And there's also the Footnights. The Footnights. I loathe the Footnights. Now, I understand their introduction from a gameplay point of view. Absolutely. No doubt. Bretonia always had an issue with the fact that they didn't have access to solid infantry. They only had peasants. I get it. But it is fundamentally against the culture and theme of so Bretonia to have Footnights. Even the old models of Footnights back in, like, what, second, third edition, Warhammer Fantasy or something? Ancient edition, specifically stated that the Bretonian Knights only fight on foot in exceptionally pressing circumstances. In other words, only when their mounts are literally dead will they deign to fight on foot. And so to have a standardized foot knight unit, I hate it. I, I, I hate it. and Because it makes Bretonia not Bretonia. It makes it into... And there's the thing too. It makes what was once a very unique faction into just a faction of knights rather than just Bretonia. It turns them into the Empire but without guns. It makes them less unique than the Empire. Because at least the Empire has got that whole like uh, Holy Roman Empire flavor to them, right? What are the Bretonians now? They're not even like Arthurian knights anymore. They're just French. Ugh. Anywho, uh, Mark Jame, Donuts to Dolls. GW should have started with Cafe versus Chaos Dwarves. I mean, that would have been pretty damn cool. Yes, it would have been very damn cool, actually. Uh, but uh, I, I think it would require too much innovation. And the thing is also... Uh, the way Cathay was done by uh, Creative Assembly, I thought was a very, very, very bad way of doing it. Because they made Cathay far too ideal and paradisic and magical. Now then, uh, Lord Captain, is it, is it really you? Argenta tries a weapon on Idara and watches you closely like... Over from the side of the room, you hear the racking of a bolter. Chick, chick. <laughs> hmm. Sister Argenta. Duty. <laughs> Dogmatic. Killer dealer. Die dire heretic. Wow. Game really... I mean, it, it makes a point, but... We need to keep her alive. Are you alright, Idira? I... I don't know. It, it should be quiet, but in my head... The whispering's louder. It, it shouldn't be like that. No, it shouldn't. This abomination claims that you called her. Is this true? Me? Did I? Yes, Lord Captain. I think it was me who called her. Idira, it is becoming difficult to keep you alive. There's an Inquisitor. Oh, well, an Inquisitorial agent right over there. Could you perhaps just, I don't know, make shit up? <laughs> just this once. Lie to me, Idira. Just this once. I can barely remember. The voices, my all good whispers, they suddenly turned red, sharp. They started cutting, tearing, ripping me to pieces. I cried out. I called for help, and she came. Damn it. Why are the voices making so much noise? Now, shut up. Shut up. Oh, I don't know, Adira. I don't know. I don't know why the whispers are doing this to you. <laughs> no, no clue. No idea. No, no. No concept. <clears throat> Was that your doing? Well, yes, probably. Has anything like this ever happened before? Like this? Never. 
Well, there was something, but it was different. It was as strong or as terrifying. Apparitions appeared. Mechanic me mechanisms malfunctioned. The crew lost their minds. But Lady von Valencius knew about that. She said it was a small price to pay, an acceptable expense. No psychic is immune to it, but what happened here, it was just a mistake. I won't do it again. Oh, well. If you say so. There will be no more mistakes, Lord Captain. <laughs> Argent. <laughs> Rerax Bolter with hostile intent. This is not the first time this heretic has caused the death of her crew. Do you remember the incident on the mid-decade era? What did those honest souls ever do to deserve such a fate? They returned hiccups into mutants and attacked their own families. You are a monster, a heretic. If you have any humanity oh, left in you, admit what you are. <laughs> Shut up. Quit your preaching. You're the worst out of everyone here. I don't know about that. Sometimes, the Psyker's first manifestation leads to their death and the deaths of many others. But if a Psyker possesses inordinate willpower and discipline, they can stave off their fall for some time. Yatira has been alive many years already, a laudable achievement and a stroke of incredibly good fortune. But the forces of the warp will ultimately devour any Psyker deprived of the Emperor's protection. The fact that these manifestations are growing more powerful is a clear sign that the end is near. If his rogue trader has been seen on the ship recently, was that your yes, doing? The question. Fire yes, the your supreme glorious greatness, <laughs> Sir Arch of Terror. I did it a couple of times when I'd had too much drink. At the time, I thought I heard her voice among all the whispers in my dream. The voice was so sad, so clear. I couldn't help myself. I answered. I hoped I could reach her there. Ever since she died, since I first heard her voice in my head, the whispers have gotten louder, clearer, harder to resist. You hear the warp whispering in your head and you're answering, I hear what saying. Good point. You don't know what it's like. The most important person in your life who's now gone forever suddenly starts talking to you inside your head. How could I not try to reach her? I had I have, to. I have lost. I know what you're thinking. How do you? Vividly imagines a gallo. <laughs> During the warp jump when Lady Theodora came out towards us, I kept thinking about that meeting. I keep blaming myself. Why didn't I divine it? Why didn't I stop her killer? These thoughts have been playing at the back of my mind day after day, choking me with guilt. And do you know what? The one on the officer's deck? I don't know what that was, but this time here, this was the product of my guilt, an accuser straight out of my own mind. What am I supposed to do with you now? His supreme glorious greatness, Sir Arch of Terror, I know after everything I've done, you have no faith in my willpower or my strength. But I can fix everything. It's just I'm not at my best, you see. But maybe we can find a way to replace my implants or some other remedy, a better one. Lady von Valencia said that such a thing could be found, if not here than elsewhere. I just didn't need it before, but we just need to find it. We need to figure out where to look for it, and we'll get it, and until then I'll keep myself on a tight leash. Man, she's not very persuasive, is she? God damn it. But Fenrir 44 has spoken. Hmm. I can't throw her off the ship as, as much as it makes sense. I want to help you, <laughs> dear. <laughs> uh, oh well, God help me. Okay, you did. We're gonna look for new brain implants to keep you under fucking control. Thank you, thank you, Supreme Glorious Greatness and Arch of Terror. I won't let you down. You're making a mistake, Lord Captain. Don't I know it? Perhaps you will find something to slow the decline, but it will not stop it. Only a miracle can save Idira at last now. Why, I've heard enough stories about ways of extending a psyche's life, but I don't think you'll like all of them. And then she died. I think I'd better, with your permission, Lord Captain, faint. Lord Captain, I received a report that the shooting on the lower deck had stopped. I presume you've brought the situation under control? Awaiting further instructions. Hmm. <laughs> and even then the game is like 
Are you sure you wouldn't want to space her all the way at the end? <laughs> uh. I got rid of the warp illusions. He did us live. <laughs> the, the power of capitalism she's lived. Of course, Lord Captain, as you command. Tell the, uh, tell the surgeon to, you know, wear double gloves or something. He's gonna need to protect himself quite a bit from the quantity of crazy he's gonna have to touch. One and it's done. So a frightening quantity of cray cray in that pussy, I tell you. Collect all. Alright. Uh, Mark to shame. GW must have received the memo from the US Army that stated death before dismount motto is problematic. Apparently. I really do need to make a video on it because I just... I, I feel that it is, and I might be reading too much into it, but have I ever? No, I have never. I feel like this is simply another example of GW wandering too far away from their roots and not, well, they, they don't understand it. And like people point to all of the little things like calling the, the Ultramarines the 8th Legion and shit like this. And it's like, oh, it's just an underpaid intern. Oh, it don't mean anything. Oh, whoa, whoa. it does. It does mean anything. Because people who are passionate about a setting do not make mistakes like that. And if people who aren't passionate about the setting are being hired by and employed by the company who makes the setting, this is El Problemo. Uh, ben says, thoughts on 40k Skaven of an Imperial variety. A Project Rattenreich, perhaps. Praising the Rat Emperor on the Golden Throne. Some people love Imperial Guard Skaven. Oh, Loyalist Skaven. Oh, boy. Heaven help the regiment there, center or so serve alongside. It would be funny, though. It would be. The magnetic storm raging by the planet blows the gaze of Augur race. Only truly powerful diviner machines may seize through the currents of magnetic fluctuation in their blessed vigil and discover the mysteries of this Emperor Forsaken planet. Maybe he will return one day. I see. Secrets. I think they should do 40k Skaven, though. I think they should. I think it would be fun. I think it'll be amusing, and I think you could easily justify it within the setting as well. The ruins of an ancient imperial city were discovered on a dead world, completely deprived of an ecosystem. According to the report, the entire settlement is contained in a titanic glass dome that once held an artificial atmosphere. Your augurs detected the framework of three other similar structures that were never completed. For whatever reason, the dome systems failed and left behind it's this city, a ghost that can never manage to become a proper colony of the Imperium. Hmm. Explore the palace. A lavishly decorated estate of the local ruler towers over rows of featureless bunkhouses. Several explorers perished from the cleverly hidden tripwires in the courtyard, but after losing their companions, their teams easily disarmed the remaining traps. In the estate, anything of value has been promptly delivered to the rogue trader's vessel. The Lord Captain was even given an exquisite sword found in a secret cache that once belonged to the mansion's owner. Oh. Why exactly did they booby trap the mansion? <laughs> Hmm. Temple District. The Temple District is situated at the heart of the city. The God Empress statue intricately carved from precious crystals is suspended beneath the dome, supported by chains of gold, and can be seen from anywhere in the colony. Inspired by the majestic sight, the expedition members set off to explore the area with renewed vigor. Soon enough, they stumble upon an ancient weapon lying on a pedestal wreathed in sunlight. The expedition brought it back to the ship and told many tales about how the Emperor himself, who had been watching them from above, had directed their attention to their sacred relic. The Emperor protects. And gathered as many supplies as well. Your people flooded the city like a tidal wave, filled the buildings after buildings, bunkhouse after bunkhouse, and receded from its quiet streets just as quickly. There were plenty of useful things among their findings, including foodstuffs and weapons. And finally, take the fuel as well. Let's just strip the entire damn place. 
It takes several trips to deliver the massive Prometheum storage tanks to your vessel. The crew grimly points out the colony was running out of fuel. Had the life support system not failed prematurely, the locals would still have perished due to lack of energy. They were foolish, and they died foolish deaths. But their cute nonsense shall serve the Von Falencius dynasty well. And a plasteel extraction point. Why not? Cthulian Itham says, Wait, did the Keep Idira Alive Fund win? Here's a ten buck to kill for kill Idira. Also, while her arc is very stupid, I feel like it's also inconsistent. There is no mention in this controversy of the rebellion. Indeed, it did win. Uh, largely, if not near universally, to the efforts of Fenrir 44, who really, really, really wanted Idira to be alive. It was an 11th hour upset of remarkable, remarkable ferocity. Alright. Now, do I go up there, or do I go back there? I'm heading there, so we're going to make this safe. And I'm going to go there, hoping that it connects to Telecos Epsilon. Which it does not. Well, diddly dick me most magnificently. At least I can make that safe and I can make that safe too. So it's not the worst thing in the entire universe. Sandoom says GW needs a hard slap and say no, Bretonia fight while riding horses. They do not foot slug. DW needs an expert in all lore as quality control. If only they didn't blacklist a certain expert we know. Indeed, if only. But they did. Again, like I, I think it is just emblematic of the fact that they don't recognize their own setting anymore. Oh god, I don't have any more mining thingies. Alright, in honor of Fenrir, we're going to bring Idira today, and uh, I think Pascal. Pascal's worthy of a, of a little join-up as well. Yes. Corona, 50 Norwegian Kronas for Idilet Waifu Fund. Thank you very much, sir. Dinok. It looks like we will be having a Xenos pet today. Your lordship. Now lay claim to the star. It's a creepy little planet. Right Our tools and devices are now come in layers of lost. dirt Shit. and local flora. Speak to the fear. The dog's here? What? Uh, black spot surrounding the structure of some sort. To fear the dogs you. I won't tolerate weakness. Black spot surrounded by structures of some stones. <laughs> Touch the darkness and the darkness will accept you. Ah. I don't know about that. That sounds... <laughs> Mildly dangerous, but uh... Numerous ropes cables end abruptly at the very edge of the pit, vanishing into the gathering darkness. Oh yeah, this is very safe. Let's uh... Lean over and stretch your hand into the darkness. Let's touch the pit! At the edge of your consciousness, you sense something slimy and intang intangible answering your invitation for contact. It seeps into your thoughts, tasting your emotions, surprise and curiosity envelop you, but these feelings are not your own. Willpower zero. Okay, let's continue touching the entity. You are hit by a sudden wave of all-consuming silence. A moment later, the world around you disappears, leaving only black, vicious, boundless darkness. The absoluteness of it's overwhelming, and you slowly sink into the void that is sucking you in. What are you? You are looking at a tiny person peeking over the edge of the bottomless darkness. You are looking at yourself. Then you blink and see the same place, except the camp around you is full of life. 
Scholars are zipping back and forth between field structures, switching on unfamiliar machines in an attempt to know the unknown. A moment later, they are all nude, singing and dancing around the pit. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, that sounds like a normal uh, Adeptus Mechanicus frat party right there. The smell of heated bodies, blood and so sweat assault your nostrils, you. drowning out your thoughts. One by one, the lunatics fall into the embrace of nothingness. You make out toad-like Xenos building a temple around the pit. They are praying, conducting rites, making sacrifices to the darkness in hopes of unimaginable gifts. Then the darkness shrouds everything once more. Or rather, you are the darkness. Something immeasurably vast, endless, capable of reaching the farther stars or swallowing a galaxy. But some will pulls you out of the cozy embrace of the void towards the light, and you snap out of the visions as sorrow fills you from within. You find yourself on the floor of an abandoned estate. You feel someone disgusting presence behind you. A raspy, foul breath tickles your nostrils. A drop of water trickles down from the stone ceiling and shatters the silence with a deafening splash. The heavy door before you is open. You can try to escape. It is now or never. Alright, we're going to keep touching the darkness. You gather your thoughts and strike up a conversation with the unseen creature. You can tell it about yourself and your crew, about how you do not remember how you got here, but you would like to avoid conflict. You feel the fear retreat and take the first step towards the creature. You sit at the apex of a massive onyx pyramid. Your abilities are limitless. With a single thought, you can raise mountains, drain an ocean, or disperse the clouds. But nobody cares anymore. Soon, your brothers and sisters will sacrifice you so that they can share your power among themselves and guide the civilization to prosperity. <laughs> Kill your brothers and sisters! Urgh. For the sake of future generations. I don't know about that. I think my brothers and sisters are shit stays, and I think they should all die. As your brothers and sisters surround you, you release your powers and consume every last one of them. For 10,000 days and as many nights, you battle their souls until you subdue them completely. Immortal, you remain on the throne for thousands of years, watching your civilization blossom, die, and fade into darkness. You are lying on burning sand, struggling to open your eyes, but your eyelids feel too heavy. You can barely move your arms and legs. Your stomach hurts, your throat is bone dry. Several of your kin, all emaciated, are scattered around you. The hunger is so strong that it is driving you mad, and you let out a bestial howl. Something metallic clinks next to your right hand. A knife. This is it. You can survive. You must survive. All you need to do is decide whom to sacrifice. Oh... I see Archley is all up in this one too, alright. Cut off a piece of yourself. I, I don't know if that will really benefit me much, frankly. Hmm. Shadow Splendid, Borley, Woman, the Ugly Mutant, the Infant who is crying piteously, calling for its mother. I mean, they do say that baby meat is nice and tender. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do say that. They, they do. And it's probably true. Whether that is justification for eating babies, well, I'll leave that to your imagination. Hmm. I mean, that one has a toughness test, so I feel like that's the one I should be taking, but... Normally, I just eat the woman, because, you know... Listen, okay, I can justify this. I can justify this, okay? Eve ate the apple, and thus cursed us all to be cast out of paradise. It is therefore only correct that I eat Eve. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. The woman. Eat the woman. You clutch the knife in your hand and strike. So the darkness is glee, you close your eyes and gorge yourself in the hot blood, sating your hunger, until the heavy smack across your face brings you back to your senses. You are lying on the ground, someone distance away from the hole surrounded by your worried comrades. Looking around, you realize that someone is missing. Uh, one of the scene officers gone missing in the system specular. 
Oh well. It was only a senior officer. It was only a woman. I see no particular problem with this, uh, this course of events. Lord Captain, seeing as not all members of your FNU return from the surface, the ship's augurs have initiated scanning protocols and the shuttle crews have commenced with preemptive preparations. A small sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like it. I like it indeed. <laughs> all right. All right. Yep. Mm-hmm. A small sacrifice, indeed. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, sometimes you just gotta, you gotta do what needs to be done. <laughs> Unless that was Argenta. If that was Argenta, I'm reloading, but I don't, I, I hope not. <laughs> I like that one. It's a, it's a little, it's a little archlay moment. That's a small archlay moment. Let's see. Magenta, you, uh, you still around? <laughs> oh god, help me. Really? Oh Jesus, that actually does eat Argenta. <laughs> oh my god. Ay, ay, ay. See, when they were like a senior officer, I was like, okay, one of my crew. That's fine. I don't necessarily care. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think uh, I think that's going to require a little a little reload, I'm afraid. <laughs> oh, there's it. Yeah, there there it is. There it is. <laughs> one one missing crew member. <laughs> Ah, uh, so the, the scraw- wait, so the scrawny man in a tattered military uniform. That's got to be Adelblad, right? Um, the- the infant. Who's the infant? Who's the infant? Like, the bawling woman with crying hands. I guess bawling as in praying, I guess? I mean, at least I finally did get to eat out the uh, eat out our sister Agenta, right? That's uh, something. I finally got to eat out sister Agenta. Yeah. Uh, stretch your hand into the darkness. What are you? What do you want from me? Uh, talk it out. Continue. Uh, kill them all. Toughness. You bite down on your belt and cut off a piece of your own flesh. The pain is so terrible that your vision darkens. Unable to bear it, you let out a frenzied groan, but you still shove the slimy scrap into your mouth and swallow it. What were the other options? You can sense the darkness triumph. It has been following your through thoughts with great interest, rummaging in your memory, studying your emotions, savoring your resolve and rage. Its bottomless gut rumbles with satisfaction. At last, grateful, it lets you go and presents you a parting reward. Experience, I guess. I don't actually know what it gave me, but I'm sure it gave me something adorable. I don't know. I'm very sorry that I ate you that one time, Argenta. I apologize, but you know, I've been trying to say I'm willing to eat you out for quite some time now. I feel as if you should have seen this coming. I really, really do. Ah, who is better, Waifu, Archley or Argenta? Oh god, more extra extraction thingies. Well, I mean, come on. I'm gonna, let's see here. I'm gonna find it now. Now, now we're gonna find the Archley artwork real quick. Why is Streamlabs so uncooperative today? There. Well, 
Oh boy, well that's a little bit. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, fit to screen. There we go. Archlay. Archlay is a pretty good girl. Okay, she's um. She's a little misunderstood occasionally. It is true, but Archlay is a pretty good girl. She is definitely is. Streamlabs really do not does not want to cooperate today at all, does it? God help me. There we go. Make her a bit smaller. I'll put Archley over there for a little bit. Yes. Archley is a good girl. Okay, she's the best girlfriend you could ever possibly have. She's very, very, very affectionate. Maybe a little bit too much on occasion. She will only ever love you, even if it kills you. <laughs> oh, we're attacked by pirates. Yes. Kill them now. And she may indeed make you do some things that you might indeed regret, like eating your parents or your neighbors. But she will do it out of love, God damn it! And if that isn't good enough reason to kill and eat your parents, I don't know what is. I see. Uh, Sweden, you saved her. Your duty to your wallets, to our wallets, have been fulfilled. Now you should give her to Heinrich. <laughs> no, no, must I save. I lift up my voice save. in prayer for this vessel and its hollowed guns. Uh, Sweden Holgren, you just got a B bis item for a genta. neck item, bis item for genta. And Gabriel Lantier, have this to reach out to the darkness. Thank you very much. Alright, so I need to kill that thing and that thing, like, primo. Because that's the thing that's going come. to be leaving. That thing needs to go blue bloom. At the expense of all other things, that thing needs to go kabloom. Lay in the course. And so it shall. Macro cannons, volley! Macro cannons. Leave the hull strewn across the stars! See, the Fire first time the I was doing this, batteries. I didn't shoot them enough, because I was assuming you weren't actually supposed Fire to, you know, right now. blow up their whole goddamn ship. But no, it's fine. You, you can just shoot them. It's okay. They'll surrender eventually. You dirty little slag. How dare you. Oh, interesting. I see we haven't worried too much about collision models. Good, good. <laughs> Change the rogue trader symbol to Archley. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if we can, but it would be mildly funny. I agree. Archley as an inquisitor. That would be kind of funny. That would be kind of funny. I'd have to commission art for it though. I mean, I could. I could, conceivably. Alright, now what? Set the course. Hmm. Oh, wait. Uh, hold on, I got this. Whee! Oh. Oh, that was... That wasn't ramming speed, was it? No, it Leave wasn't. But hang, it's uh. I think I think Another that might salvo. fuck me up. <laughs> it it leaves me in something you know uh, resembling the Leave correct the position. Strewn across the stars. I guess, kinda, sort of, uh, not really. Them. God, I think I just fucked myself. But let's see, let's let's see if I fucked myself completely. Um. I can turn pretty hard with that. I was I was thinking ramming speed and just smash through the rear of that Cobra class destroyer and be like, hey, hey, shouldn't have placed yourself directly in front of me. It was a foolish thing to do. <laughs> chaos playthrough. <laughs> Archley chaos playthrough. That would be truly terrible. Oh no, torpedoes. Torpedoes. Uh, 
Okay, okay. It's being merciful with me. Fire right now! Ouchies, though. Is that my shield or is that my health bar? I don't even know. I think I think it is. So, hmm. I'm gonna need that, obviously. The time has come. I'll turn very hard. That is my health bar. Oh god. All right. Uh, restore the shields. Macro cannons, volley. I wish. Oh, there we go. It. All right. Goodbye. See you later, I guess. Fire right now! Alright, now I just need to, you know, live through the rest of this engagement. Another salvo! She's potentially easier said than done. This one's going down. Potentially easier said than done indeed. All right, shields, let's hope you hold up. Uh, Lay in the yeah. course. Oh, boy. That one enormous hit peeled off, like, most of my hit points, which is rather unfortunate. At least the plasma torpedoes aren't hitting anything. I've got shields still on that side, so it shouldn't be as bad, but these are really dangerous ships. Could I repair in combat? Was that a thing? I don't remember if that was a thing. I feel like that might have been a thing. And that's one. It does come at a little bit of a expense to my own ship as well, which is non-ideal. So close. Another salvo. Boom, 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 boom. Leave the hull strewn across the stars. The time has come. Let's get her going. Uh... I feel like there was a. Repair your boat button, but I can't remember where or how or why or when or if that was an upgrade, but we've We've killed that one. That one's gonna run. That's fine. I'm okay with the little Cobra leaving So there's only one Cobra class left which we should be able to deal with even with our somewhat measly quantity of remaining hit points Lay in the course Shields should be reacting and reaffirming themselves. Yep, we've got full shields everywhere. Beautiful. <clears throat> Still not enough, but it'll keep us safe. Lit a cobra class, lit a cobra class. Got full shields. This should be survivable. Indeed it is. I'm not a massive fan of my current position. So let's the turn. Actually, should have moved there first, then I could have hit it with a broadside too, Fire but the last batteries. with a little bit of luck, in fact, I'm pretty sure running. our forward facing weaponry should be able to deal with that. Yes, I have missed yes, indeed. Lovely. Right. Well, we're definitely going to be wanting to repair that, methinks. And maybe a few upgrades as well might not be such a silly thing after all. I've got loads of scrap. Let's upgrade the hull. We haven't leveled up just yet, but we're getting there. And 
one more I'll upgrade he thinks. There we go, 162. Sadly, we don't have any more extractors, so I guess we're just going to pop on back into the galaxy at large then. Do, 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 do. Hmm. Right, we're heading there. Uh, sadly, there's no direct route. But I can make that one a bit safer. Pop over there. The warp jump went surprisingly smooth. None of the deck officers on duty reported any incidents. However, a strange discovery awaited the Lord Captain when he returned to his quarters. The bed was unmade, and the impression of a head was still visible on the pillow. There were no other signs of intrusions. The guards swore on oath that nobody entered the Lord Captain's quarters. Oh boy. It was probably one, it was probably merely one of my countless furry sex slaves. I collect them much like Pokemon cards, you see. I've got dozens of them at this point. Furries from across the galaxy, from every degree, Nicomimis to full-on fursuits. The latter are mostly kept in the Sioux due to their feral nature, but should someone ever desire a true sexual challenge, you know, going into the cage is discouraged, not forbidden. Lord Captain, according to the telemetry, the parameters of this system matches those of Telecos Epsilon, home to the agri world Yanis, that belongs to the Fon Falensis dynasty. Yanis really is a disconcerting name for a planet, isn't it? We have received a vox message from the planet. The Agri World's governor officially welcomes the rogue trader and reports that she has begun preparations for a formal reception to celebrate the arrival of the planet's sovereign. Your subjects are looking forward to your visit. Yes, they should. Begin scanning. I mean, I feel like I would probably have scanned this planet already, considering it's, you know, been within my purview for a few hundred years, but... Tells details. Boom, 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 boom. Give me an extraction thingy. I need more of them. No, plasteel. That is not an extraction thingy. All right. Actually, before we... Actually, we can't scan it real quick. But before we go down to the planet, we do have, like, a three level ups to do and some gear to possibly hand out. So let's... Commit to the administrative nonsense before we go down to Yarnus. You know, the two-faced god, the traitor god, and all that. Uh, Mr. Superchat, did I now? Let me see, uh, Alex Adamson. They should have gotten the Petty Brothers back on board to work on the new range. That 100 years War and War of the Roses minis look awesome. Apologies for missing it. Thank you for pointing it out. The new miniature, I mean, I don't dislike the new miniatures, honestly. They're okay. They're, you know, they're a little over-designed, as is all things these days. Like, absolutely not. Absolutely, yes. That is one of the problems with modern day 40k. They're heading too much hiccups in the, uh, the Age of Sigma direction. Uh, Huh. Okay, that's pretty good. That's actually really good. I want that use Xenos weapon ability though, really. Yes, that would be more useful. Hmm. I wish I could reroll only one. Uh, nearly guard. Uh, attack the vanguard. Alright, uh, that's cute. Not super useful, but cute. I mean, I can miss. Did 50% damage. That too is cute. Pascal. Heh. 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 At you again. Ah, oh, God help me. A free single attack with a weapon. I like the sound of that. 
Um, Clayton Mame, Civic Kill, Critical Chain, Hunt's Ambush, Boulder and Expert. Melto Weapon. I would like to have a Melto Weapon, if at all possible. Simultaneously make several attacks. I'm preparing a single number of prey in combat. Alright. Multi attacks is always nice. Sensory deprivation, psychic assault, psychic shriek damage, stun. Okay, an AoE stun. You can't really say no to that. Prophetic Intervention, Enfeeble, Invigorate, Wounds, that's very good. Crown, blah, 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 many, many thing things. Hmm. Stability, Thriving Apparel, Power Conduit. Hmm, no. Decreases Veil Degradation by three. I have, I have lost shit. That's not bad. Veil Degradation, definitely that one. And you then, my dear Cassia. Uh, you just have your thing, okay. And Argenta, you've also got a thing, City Superiority. I'm going to make some attack each turn, including one additional attack on turn this hero catch with you. The first attack you return or no. Okay, so shoot more. I like the ability to shoot more. Hmm, still can't use the fancy ass chainsword, tragically, so we'll have to keep that in the bag for a while longer. You don't really have any replacement weaponry either. Fort sword, noble sword. Uh, no, 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 not really. Pascal, it's uh, actually the two-handed weapon does less damage than the one-handed weapon. Yep, I think you're going to be using a great sword now, Pascal, as your Omnisire axe has uh, well, it's gone a little bit old and derpy. Nah, Lightning Arc is great, so we're going to keep Lightning Arc, obviously, because Lightning Arc is amazeballs. And you're going to keep... Hmm. 10 willpower, 5 perception. I guess we'll start switching more over to a staff again, now that she has a bit more in the way of abilities for that. Single attack of the bolt that automatically hits the target. Well, that's pretty neato, Cheeto. Yep, I think we're going to pick that one. Grants 15, Medica. Alright, put that on you too. Nice. Time to go down to the planet. Might of shame, don't assume all say Disney lost copyright to original Mickey Mouse. Yes, it did. Mind you, only the really old one, though. Steamboat Willie is what uh, entered... Um, uh, 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 the public thingy. God damn it. Right. Whilst I try to remember basic wording, I'll let chat vote over who to bring. So the number one slot and the number two slot will be brought here. There you go. Uh, yes, uh, Mickey the Mouse, or the Steamboat Willie variant, uh, Willie, variant, of Mickey the Mouse has entered into public domain. That was the word I was looking for. 
in has. Now, that is something. It's not a whole lot of something because it's only the Steamboat Willy thingy, so it's not like it's it's not Mickey the Mouse, Mickey the Mouse. So they haven't lost copyright over Mickey the Mouse as a property or an entity in and of itself. They only lost one of the earliest versions because even after fighting the system for years and years and years and years, finally, GW had to give up the ghost and hand over one of their precious little mascots to the public. Imagine that. Being forced to give up a thing you've been abusing for so long and so hard. It does open up some interesting possibilities, though, since, you know, Steamboat Willie's design is not that much different from regular old Mickey, so there are definitely people with... Uh, malice in their hearts they can find ways to uh, make this make disney look a little bit retarded yes i think and i hope so as well i hope disney is in for a very hard year a very harsh year an unusually tough year actually Let's see, 91 votes, 94, 95, 97, 98, all right. Voting is slowing down, so it's looking like Pascal and Heinrichs, with Pascal having a pretty solid lead over the third slot. So Pascal and Heinrichs will be the ones tagging along on today's adventure. Right, I think we might need to see the UI again, so we're going to have to say farewell to Archley, the best waifu. Alex Adamson says, I'm playing while watching the stream. I'm currently making a batshit crazy female commissar with better melee skill than Adelblad. It's pretty great. I imagine, yes. Like, you could make an Adelblad in this game and you would be pretty good. Ah. Future pet waifu Xenos. Archley would have pretty good melee skill, it's true. Ah yes, the first and old, old damn near only attractive female character in the entire video game, which is reason enough to believe her to be evil, of course. A lavishly dressed noble woman in an opulent silk gown watches you with an expectant air, but then gracefully bows, bows her head. Gem encrusted implants protrude from her arms and necks. I welcome you on behalf of the noble house Viet Ab Abram. So My name is Vicenta Janus Viet Ab Abram af Coronis. By the grace of the Emperor and the will of the rogue trader Theodora von Valencius, I serve as planetary governor and imperial commander in chief of this world. A Theodora appointee. Hmm. And greetings to you, noble Vesarian. It has been years since your last visit to Yarnus. I am glad to see you again. It is a good sign when a rogue treader Seneschal does not visit a subject's planet for a long time. Isn't that correct, Lady Viet? It means the governor is taking care of all that matters, and there is no need for the Seneschal to interfere. I hear praise in those words, and I thank you for them. In truth, your arrival in the palace of the esteemed Lady von Valencius is quite unexpected. Bitch is dead. Give me her shit now. Such tragic news! I will see to it that the planet observes a month of mourning. For Janus! Oh no. The raggedy, scruffy-ass peasants that surrounded our noble, prestigeful group have turned out to be scruffy peasants. God, Emperor knows that scruffy peasants are the worst things ever and must, must be exterminated. 
Pascal, if you would please kill all of them. You made an attempt. You tried. Speaking of attempts. Alright. Um, Argenta. I feel like you're damn near the squishiest of my party these days. So we're going to pop that on you. Give you a little bit of a buff. Maybe throw an aim bonus at you as well. We'll make this the rear line. We'll make this the front line, and then we will put the thing on it. Right, and then we will simply just shoot someone in the head. Go. That will reduce their damage taken by a fair old bit, which will keep them safe. Alright, bitches. It is time. Hmm. Battlefields are always drowned in scarlet. Now remember, scatter. Scatter quickly. Scatter before the the palace guards get an opportunity to fire. Because they're going to shoot straight into my group. Uh-oh. Oh, hey, I didn't die. That's unusual and good. Disgusting peasantry. They really do need to learn that their betters are their betters for a reason. Rebels. Rebel Scott. Never once in history have the rebels ever been the good guys. They are just incapable of being the good guys. Well, that was not entirely what I had hoped for. But of course. I'll just poison his ass, buff yourself, and head him again. Let's see. You see, rebelling against the natural order of things, which is obviously the noble peasant dichotomy, is an inherently bad thing. For the obvious reason that you are rebelling against God. God determines who rules over you, not man. I think that leaps to creature, not, uh, not enemy, unfortunately. Still, might as well shoot it. And rebelling against the rules of God is obviously not going to be... Ooh, ouchies. Is not going to be something that God thinks good things about, okay? Victory is imminent. It will be done. Some people were placed in positions of superiority over others because they were better at ruling. It's simple as. It's nature. Now, occasionally, some people, like Henrix, will prove themselves to not actually be worthy of the trust placed in them. But most of the time, near universally, they will always be the best and the brightest of the bunch. Like Agenta, for example. Who is about to demonstrate to us all the many, many, many benefits of automatic gunfire. I don't see how that could possibly be a 0% chance to hit, so I'm just going to ignore you telling me that and uh, open fire. Hmm. Darn it. I was hoping maybe Heinrichs could be on fire there too. He did fail me after all. All right, Archley. The front line has advanced somewhat since last time, putting me out of range of my 
boss abilities. Heresy is the question. Fire is the answer. <laughs> well, I didn't try to do that, but I did indeed do it. I can't do any of that either. Oh no. And then more damage was done. Ah, uh, Heinrich's letting the front line down has truly caused a little bit too much damage here. Oh well. And a big old debuff. As usual, it really is the snipers that have got to be dealt with. ASAP. Due to their ability to one-shot most of my characters. Let's clear up Cassia, shall we? Thank you very much, Adelblad. As always, you prove yourself to be a fine rock upon which to break the peasant rebellions. Hmm. I keep thinking Argenta needs a melee weapon. Did I not get that heavy flamer thingy? I thought I got that heavy flamer thingy. Right, let's kick off firearms mastery and begin picking some of these little shits off. And a full auto. Hmm, plenty of wounds. But few deaths. Uh, come on, Pascal. Add a lot. We can get into cover there. Yes, we can. Finish that one. Apparently not. Okay, that's the second 94% chance I've missed so far. Remarkable. Me. Luckily, psychic powers don't need to hit. As I am apparently incapable of doing so. Alright, Cassia, we'll have you advance nice and aggressively. Pop that man's brain. And have a skull gently castrate that man, apparently not. Hmm. Isn't this a job? But hole clinches every time the allied is firing. And luckily, Pascal got out of the way with nearly three points of damage to his face there. And let's heal ourselves just in case. Just in case that guy smacks me for uh, nine damage. Oh, I can take that man damage. Nine damage is handleable. The charge rate is pretty long, right? So if I go over there. Huh? I'd rather not. Apparently not. Ah, but you can charge that, I see. Sometimes, Adelard, sometimes you make very little sense. As the Emperor commands, I act. can escape the Emperor's Alright. There we go. That's pretty much the encounter wrapped up very neatly. One casualty, Heinrichs, of course, but uh, that was mostly because of his own foolishness rather than any error on my behalf. I, have read of I didn't tactics. see you there. I tend to can probably finish him off. Don't shoot me. Well, I lived. Ah, 
Ah, oh, yes. The 94 percenters. You can't expect to hit that. But the 20 percenters. Oh, yeah, no problems. Nemo problemo, sir. That's not the Seneschal's job. I'm, I'm, not I'm, I'm pretty sure we've got a lion on target. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm fairly certain video game, but if you insist, I guess we don't. At your back I need to find some way to poison his weapon. Seeing as he always leaves them with just a little bit of health left. It'd be nice to have a little tick on the enemy's turn just to finish things off, you know? Smear it in with Eldar feces or something equally toxic. Emperor, give me strength. If I may. Lovely. Nijnev says, fun fact, Heinrichs is the straight female romance. Oh. I mean, there aren't too many other options, to be fair. Like, what? Pascal? Uh, Pascal does not strike me as the romantic type, and Adelblad's still in love with Theodora, so... Hmm. Do not fret, layperson. We have grown used to outrageous loveliness amongst the wardens of every world we visit. Pale grayness is strangling this peasant like a noose. His words are laden with fear for our well-being, and yet he fears for his own even more. You should all be flogged. Kill the officer. Oh, it's a bit harsh. Hmm. All right, chat. This is uh, an important decision. It's okay, peasant. Flogging. And execution. Justice. Exclamation point. That one seems to be a little bit busy over there. He's, uh... He's making sure that we're all secure, finally, after this ambush. Now, you should bear in mind that it's very dangerous to give the peasants the idea that they can get away with things, okay? It's, uh, it's very unfortunate to let them think that they can be forgiven for transgressions all too often. Because then the peasants will... They'll, they'll just assume that they can get away with anything and everything. And peasants, being inherently immoral creatures, will thus attempt to get away with everything. As peasants, you see, they are not born with any moral sensibilities, okay? And they only develop basic moral sensibilities through extensive hard work and, gui and guidance and direction from their betters. They are born with no moral sense. They do not understand that stealing and killing and fornicating and all of these things are bad. They do not understand that sodomy is wrong and countless other things. Only by bringing them to schools and proper institutions for the correct guidance of the growth of peasantry can they ever be turned into anything more than the wildest and most untrustworthy of animals. 54%, 115 votes, all right. It looks like chat is, has elected to be merciful today. Very kind chat, very gentle. They will get away with a mere whipping. They are rabble who dare to raise their hands against the planet's lawful authority. I beg you, your lordship, allow me to escort you inside. The governor will explain everything to you. All right, lead on. Take me to the flogging venue where we'll tie you to a post and commence the beating. See? In the colony of German East Africa, they developed a wonderful practice where once a week, someone would be flogged. An indigenous person, of course. And it didn't matter who. And they didn't need to do anything wrong. All that was required was that in every town a person needed to be produced to be flogged. This was an excellent reminder to the local populace that they were expected to stay in line. Because you'd be flogged. If the state is willing to flog you for absolutely no reason, then you know they're going to punish you really harshly if you start acting more peasantly. 
Your lordship, the most honorable, his supreme glorious greatness, Sir Arch of Terror, von Valencius. The governor is awaiting you in her office, where she is protected by walls and guards. Would you prefer to meet with her alone or with your entourage? My entourage will accompany me to meet the Lord Governor, mm, yes. A void shield, I see. Taking care of ourselves first, aren't we? Your Lordship, accept my abject apologies for the reprehensible stunt that spoiled the reception. Even in my worst nightmares, I could never have imagined. Mm, I am not offended. Oh, I don't know about that. Um. Your local fuss is of no concern to me. I am in need of supplies. Then so she has a glance with her companion who is standing beside her. The companion casts a quick frightened look at you and hurriedly lowers her eyes. Good. A well-raised peasant, I see. Oh, your lordship. It would give me great pleasure to immediately demonstrate the productive might of Janus to you, but there are some issues. Hmm. One of your wardens helped in battle. A superb shot. Who was it? You must be referring to Irliot. Ir 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 our chief ally in the struggle against the rebels. I have turned a blind eye now to her, her horrific mutations given the undoubted advantages she brings. You see, Irliot comes from the local degenerate stock of this world, and knows Janus like the back of her hand. She has provided several leads as to where we can find bases and secret storehouses, although I admit that at times I am tempted to send her away from the estate. Her unnaturalness means that speaking with her always leaves me feeling uneasy, such a gaunt, unfeminine figure, and so tall. I agree. Unless a woman has at least double D tits, she is simply not a female. I'm sorry, I don't make the rules, but I do enforce them. Did I hear you correctly, Governor? Viant, do you have a mysterious mutant on your estate at this very moment? One of prodigious height, slight build, and with a super national talent for shooting? Did the arrival of this help never give you pause for thought? Allow me to make myself clear, to refuse Irlit's help in our circumstances would have been incredibly rash. Yes, mutants are creatures abhorrent to the Emperor, and they should be exterminated, but sometimes humanity makes exceptions for those who can serve the Imperium. I am not concerned that your aid is yet your aid is a mutant. I am far more concerned that she may be nothing of the sort. In Supreme Gloria's greatness stood out of terror, I would like to meet this helper of Governor Vyatt's without delay and of professional interest. If you wish to speak with Irliot, you will find her outside in the orangery, most likely by the gazebo. She prefers to keep her distance from others. What's happening? Several months ago, unsup uprisings broke out on Yanis. I was not even notified at first. Gripping worms are for wardens to worry about. Alas, I only learned of what was happening after the miscreants began targeting noble families. And then it became apparent that what the administratum's accountants had referred to as unrest were in fact organized attacks on infrastructure and society leaders. They have already brought 13 agony complexes to a halt and have now moved on to assassination attempts. My wardens are doggedly tracking down the rebels, but their leaders are slipping from our grasp yet again. Hmm. Can Yanos fulfill foodstuff supplies in such a state? I risk angering you, your lordship, but this is nothing compared to shamelessly deceiving you. Let us consider the situation dispassionately. Even the most talented logistic experts of the administratum are unable to guarantee stable tithes when shuttles are wary of landing at the spaceport, and the terrified peasants are indulging a dangerous minority within their ranks. Until the usual order of things is restored on Yanus, any trade is nigh impossible. Considering what has occurred, your visit is truly a blessing. You see, Yanus does not have its own fleet. We could organize a planet-wide search if we had your ship at a disposal. Ships like yours, your lordship. Perhaps you will find a way to subject our your subjects in the to uh, support your subject. I'm sure even uh, approximate coordinates would be sufficient to have the ground forces and ship crews work together to hunt down the enemy. You want me to go off and hunt some rebels for you? 
Not quite, your lordship. My wardens are crushing the lowly saboteurs across the planet relentlessly. His supreme glorious greatness turned out of terror, but it will be for naught unless their nests are destroyed. Someone is controlling the riffraff, who are perishing in thoughtless escapades such as the one we witnessed today. And that someone could be hiding anywhere. You have resources and capabilities at your disposal the likes of which I could never hope to possess. Your ship alone is unequal asset for tracking down criminals beyond the borders of my influence. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, that one is the obvious option. As, uh, you know, she's a bit of a bad one, but... We don't know that yet. I shall kill the rebels. Yes, yes, waffle, waffle. Mm, let me at them. <sighs> and I, as well as my retinue, are at your service. My secretary is checking the staff as we speak and removing all traces of the attack from the estate. An esteemed Magos, who is responsible for agronomic efforts on the planet, is also here. He happened to be visiting this week to deliver his personal report. And of course, there is my aid. In the war against the rebels, Irilet. I have no doubt she will be delighted to share her knowledge of Yarnus with your lordship. And who is that person? One of my ladies in waiting, Amelia. Amelia performs secretarial duties and helps me to remain in constant contact with those familiars who are most responsible for the productivity, families, prosperity of Yarnus. I trust my advisors implicitly, and over time Amelia has become not merely a faithful companion, but almost my shadow. Losing her would be like losing my right hand. To bathe in the light of your greatness is a true honor, rogue trader. Very well. I won't tolerate weakness. To bathe in my light, eh? That's a suspicious statement, isn't it? Yes. A very suspicious statement indeed. Follow my lead. Now, let me loot this place. Find for me things of great value. Hmm, nothing. Oh well. Adelblad gets a level. Uh... Nope. That sword is nowhere near as good. Hum. Hmm. Yum, I'm tempted by the combat shotgun again. I think I shall bring it and give the serrated greatsword to Pascal. Loading. Heinrichs has already managed to cripple his own leg, which is remarkable. And speaking of, of this would be a lovely opportunity. To pop back into orbit real quick. Presuming it is even possible to do so. Because I remember where I might be able to find that heavy flamer. Look, we can get down to the water this way. Could we perhaps take a brief detour for a closer look? I won't tolerate of course, Cassia. Forgive me for so boldly stealing you away from the others. It's just, I simply wish to spend just a brief moment admiring the breathtaking nature of this place. Within the station's walls, I could never hope to see anything like this. A sky or a sea or green leaves. I only knew them from meagre memories of my childhood, or perhaps my mind simply made those up. Even my books, my heart and mind's blissful escape could do little to help. When a scribe grows so used to what surrounds them each and every day, they begin to take it for granted, and they never think to write just a few lines about it, but for me, to marvel at the grand canopy of the sky again is a true blessing. And speaking of a true blessing, I am going to go fetch a blessing out of the fridge. So that I may bless upon it.
I have I have lost shit. There we are. I will have snacks now. Pick a nearby flower and give it to Cassia. Oh yes. Woman, here, have flower. It's not poisonous, I promise. Not that I would know, but you know it's purple and bright yellow. I imagine it couldn't possibly kill you immediately. Hiccups. Its petals are like velvet and the fragrance. It is both sweet and spicy. A fascinating specimen of the local plant life, and I do not remember seeing it in the great concordance of flora and verdure within the current expanse, recorded by Magus Biologus Chloris Aprot. Although I suppose I simply ought to thank you for it. This flower is very beautiful indeed. Move closer and silently take in the view. Like, oh! Very beautiful indeed. I feel like the good old-fashioned lion, not as sweet as and spicy as you, would be beneficial here, but no. We shall simply just hold hands in the sunset instead. A bit cockish, but a good enough. Look, Cassia, upon the terrible water textures. Look how it does not look at all like a liquid, but rather like waves of mercury sloshing up against us. Cassia relishes every breath of fresh air. Her eyes half closed, listening to the sounds of birds hidden from view by the treetops. When the tips of her fingers touch lightly, Cassius starts, but does not remove her hand. Several minutes pass in timid silence, like mere moments, and eventually she pulls away. This place eases the soul, wouldn't you agree? Hmm. <laughs> Would you like to try? Yes, Cassia, go into the seas of liquid mercury. It cannot possibly hurt you as much as it well, could kill you. A Cthulian Thalon, it's upset me that before meeting her, the clues about her are disabled. And when we meet her, we can fire her, but not later, with the clues. False nonce. Yeah, that's a little bit dumb with the planetary governor. And McWild Eleven says, blessing upon the holy pastries. Indeed. Step into the sea, Heresy me? The yes. Fire is the Let's answer. see if witches really do float. Mischievous dashes of yellow and lilac are fluttering in the wind like bands all around you. I've never seen you exude such colors. How unexpected. Hmm. Into the water with you, heave. Ah, yes. My pants are being soaked through as I stand here, fully dressed up to my knees in seawater. Is this retarded? But very touching in an idiotic sense. If I was in fact brain damaged, this might indeed be my vision of romance. Being wet and cold for five seconds. The sea, it is so wet. I feel like the, and so are you would at once be an interesting and also self-defeating commentary. And cool, and the tiny pebbles tickle my feet. Oh, you're lucky if they just tickle. I never thought it would be so agreeable and a little startling. Thank you for encouraging me. Ready? Yes, of course. I think I know what my next painting will be. It's right. What I found. Oh, yeah, we just noticed the corpse, did we? Good. I better myself through. With marks by sharp teeth. Yep, there we go. I seem to remember that we were standing here having a little romantic no moment right next to the drowned body of what was presumably at one point a servant. But knowing that Kasia shares my opinions that the peasant class are not worth much, I imagine she believed it only to add to the ambiance. Like my lordship, the water is so wet and cold, and the floating bodies of those filthy peasants are so calming. So, nice. An old servant. You're too late. If I had dogs, I'm the master of my own fate. It's you, your lordship. The god emperor must have brought you here. I beg for you, help the rebels and save Yarnus. Forgive me, your lordship. If only I'd known it was you. My eyes deceived me. We have little time now, but I swear I'll tell you everything. Nerve toxin. The inevitable cessation of vital function is expected in no more than 60 seconds. Maybe you shouldn't have poisoned yourself. That was rather foolish, wasn't it? And say it quickly. 
In the name of the Golden Throne, your lordship, show mercy on the humble workers, the salt of Yarnus, save them. We sent so via to the untouchable governor and leader of the nobilities, creating something monstrous behind closed doors. She used the Imperium's interest as a smokescreen and a purport to be a scholar, but her actions, her actions are poisoning our planet. Did you know that the settlements that failed to pay their due tithes and time have been allowed to pay with people instead? They even delivered them uh, to order. Sometimes old folks, sometimes children. I've seen those people. I've seen them being delivered to the estate and then they've never seen or heard from again. They go in secret rooms they don't come out again, your lordship, ever. Peasants who were taken to Eurus Fai to serve House Orselio were never seen or heard from again either. They became loyal servants and toiled for the good of a great dynasty. Why should they ever return to their filthy, squalid abodes? A fine point. <laughs> the old servant lets out a moan. <laughs> hmm. You know, it. I'm prepared to swear on my life and soul. May the light of the Emperor preserve it. That is not conjecture. We have been living under Evat's rule for decades now, and things have gotten worse and worse with every passing year. The people can no longer tolerate the nightmare that lurks within the walls of this estate. You accuse the rogue traders appointed governor of heresy? If your words are false, they themselves are tantamount to heresy. And if what you say is true, if it is true, then your sacrifice will be to your credit, my good man. I swear I am not lying. Pray for me, Holy Sister, for me and for Yarnus. I'm not sure I'll last long enough to answer all your questions. It's the secret rooms. Hidden chambers deep within the palace. I've never been inside, thankfully. The servants who are allowed, the ones the governor's trust, they change. She changes them, pretties them up, defiles them. Your lordship, if you'll permit a dying man to make one last request, don't tell anyone that I was the one who unlocked the doors. If you do, I'll go after my family. My home. I'll keep your secret, brave old codger. Retarded though you may have been. This is the problem with peasantry. Occasionally their greatest strength, ignorance, will be a true virtue. As here. Ignorant of anything but the beauty of the god emperor. The peasants have risen up in glorious rebellion for the purity of their planet. But, due to their extraordinarily limited intellectual capabilities, they then commit suicide at the merest hint of opposition. One step forward, two step backwards for the savage monkey servants of our world. Greetings, your lordship. Lex Mechanic of Inselex. How may I serve you? Hmm. How are things with you and your fellows? The current situation on the planet is assessed as stable. The progress of the prospect is assessed as encouraging. Tell me about Giannis. Initializing report. The planet's soil possesses a unique composition suitable for re-engineering of the plant and the mass production of foodstuff. Significant cultivation of the eastern hemisphere with the aim of improving production process and logistic operations. Traces of xeno activity that do not pose an immediate threat to ongoing operations. Undesirable pathologies of flora and fauna have been noted which may pose a threat in the short term. Traces of xeno activity. According to data obtained during the initial survey, ruined structures of non-human origins were noted in different sections of the planet, but did not have the administrative capacity to study them in more detail. For now, I must defer the quest for knowledge. What pathologies of flora and fauna? Genetics and chemical pathologies. Your lordship, harmless species mutated and become aggressive, while plants change their chemical composition and become poisonous. This is happening more and more often, and if you do not take action, the ecosystem of the world will be irreparably disrupted. The changes may be artificial. Has the possibility been considered that someone is manipulating the ecosystem to reduce our living space? Not at all, Venerable Magos. I, our tech comrades from the Magos Biologists, are humble workers, not warriors. They could not have come up with the thought of such a militant nature. The mind must be open to all forms of knowledge. I order you to commence a check. In the event that your account of the indolence of their minds is confirmed, I will petition for the appropriate penance. Interesting. It is often what seems to be insignificant anomalies like these that lead to greater troubles. How is the governor dealing with the undesirable pathogens? 
I have analyzed the genome of the affected species, and I am currently developing suppressor genes to make the plant's organism resistance to pathology, but so far I have not been able to solve the problem. Further exploration of the plant would perhaps speed up the process, but the administrative apparatus has imposed a ban on expeditions that are not directly aimed at improving production. Hmm. Okay. Vile Xeno plant entities. Heliat Lenevis greets you, Elon Tark. Regrettable news. This creature is not a mutant, as the locals assumed, but a representative of the Eldari, one of the myriad enemies of humanity. You should not trust this creature. Do not communicate with it any longer than necessary. There is no need to mutilate my language, monkey. I speak yours well enough to converse with Elon Tark without a translator. And since you have discerned my path, I will be direct in my speech. My soul is nothing kin to yours. Your kind call us Xenos, as if we are all as one. I came here to protect the Lilithon by assisting the governor against her enemies. Will you hear me, or be blinded to sense by your precepts? I will speak to you. The Recruit Irelet um, Fund is clearly in the lead. In fact, it is the only one. People really want the Eldar Bussy. So, we shall recruit Eldar Bussy. Mm. Reckless. Maybe, but look, she's a female. We could put her in my collection of furries. Yes. She'd be the one out, well, but we can we can get a suit. Must I remind you, Master Van Kalox, that the warrant endows rogue traders with the sacred right to have dealings with Xenos when necessary? That exceptional memory of yours seems to have let you down. We shall put her in the menagerie alongside the other harem candidates. Fear not, the bars are quite sturdy. I have banished the shadow of doubt from your thoughts regarding my nature. Now you will answer my question. Why have you sought me out? There is a malevolence here that drives your kin down the path of violence. The Lilithan is expressing her wrath. For centuries, this world has resisted the brutality inflicted upon it by soulless machines and unmindful creatures. But what the machine man told you that is something else. Something more frightening. The planet is fighting an evil that has taken root in its very cradle. I like how Pascal is just turning, <laughs> just staring off at the flowers. And these are far more interesting than vile Xenos who are bitches. Reject womankind. Embrace flora. Mechanicus. Prayer number 742. Because that is what you are. Elantark means stranger from the darkness amidst the stars. You descended on flame-winged machines in a dark time when the air of the planet is soaked in blood and pain. Will you be the one to bring peace to the Lilithon? Only that they threaten the established order. There is much risk to this world should the ruler die. Hmm. This world is in distress. I wish to protect it from unnecessary suffering. I am Ellen Tark. My hand parried the death promised to the ruler of these people, and I aided you in battle against the Lost Ones. The world you call Janus was once created by the will of my kin. I have far more right to be on the Lilithon than any of you. Nope, we conquered it. It's our now. Fuck off. You don't get to be like, but we made it several thousand years ago. Yep, you see that flag up there? The one with the bird on it? It says it's mine now. But you are not asking for help, Ellen Tark. You are merely asking questions, the answers to which are either unimportant or wreathed in shadow. Explore this place. Speak to those who know. A simple task for you, and an insurmountable challenge for me, since my very appearance provokes fear and suspicion. 
When you learn anything, tell me. Perhaps then my answers will be helpful to your search. So be it. I will go with Paris you. The question. Fire with all is the due answer. respect, <laughs> are you sure this is the right decision? We know nothing about this Xenos, or why she has wormed her way into the Governor's confidence. As far as I can tell, she isn't especially keen to help us. And yet, for some obviously dark reason, she has decided to take part in our investigation. My judgments and choices are for me alone, Monkey. If uniting with your master will bring peace to the Lilithon, then it is the true path. Do not get in my way if you value your next breath. You have not yet spent enough time among humans if you think threats will dispose me more favorably toward you. The decision is yours, rogue trader. But let me be clear. I will terminate your pet Xenos at the first sign of her non-compliance. I am ready, Ellen Tark. Let us go forth. Yeah, let's. Heinrichs, you go back to the boat now. I wish to be alone with my Zenusi. <laughs> Rogue Trader, are you sure? Yeah. But, uh, Rogue Trader, I could just stay. No, we can only be six people. But why, Rogue Trader? It's the rules. <laughs> the, the arbitrary goddamn rules. Uh, I should have brought uh, the cold trader chick. She would probably find this rather amusing. Ah. My mini mini map indicates to me that there is loot over here. It is indeed correct. Your Lordship, what an honor it is to address you in person. Allow me to introduce myself, Attilius Quint, Prefectus of the Officio, Officio Agriculture. I will preserve the record of our conversation forever. Hmm. Hmm. We're not going to report it. That'd be cruel. A highly, highly exceptional individual. After today's regretful event, I am beginning to hold her talents in particular esteem. Verily, even mutants who have seen the light of the God Emperor can faithfully serve his flock. Whatever, Irelet's particular abilities could be an interesting subject of study for the Magos biologists. That elongated head shape, those eyes. Judging by the skull that was given to me, send me to me to send on to footfall, such development anomalies on Yarnas are not a quirk of nature, but some kind of inheritable trait. What did you say? Oh, madam, how my words upset you. I am certain your kinsman would be delighted to learn that people wish to make pe pretty pes appear out of his remains. And besides, I could be wrong about the nature of his origins. What skull? A most remarkable item, I must say. A true anomaly. One moment. Here it is. I believe the finished piece was intended to be given as a gift to the governor. But under the current circumstances, I doubt we'll be able to send it to footfall any time soon. Adequately preserved, it is a pity that it is empty inside. It could have become a proper servo skull herald for the rogue traitor. Unorthodox. Would be nice on my desk, yes. Ah, I mean, yes, of course, undoubtedly. Whatever you wish, your lordship, is if that will raise your spirit after the recent incident. Grits her teeth and <laughs> burns you with a look of utter disdain. <laughs> yes, I think it would look quite nice on my, on my desk. What? It's just a skull. A disgraceful incident, simply disgraceful. I cannot believe these scoundrels would dare to come so close and to drag the nobility into this as well. If they, penetra they penetrated the estate, that means they've had help some with the servants or other. Security is currently questioning the survivors, but the culprit has not been found yet. Alas, your lordship, rebellions have caused us too many problems in recent time. The rebels are interfering with established processes, interrupting supplies, sabotaging the serfs' work. A few nobles have even been killed, and worst of all, some of the victims occupied important administrative posts. Until the replacements pass their checks and complete all their induction forms and go through the official appointment procedure, important paperwork is going unsigned. It is a bureaucratic catastrophe. If things continue in this vein, I dare not even imagine what it could lead to. There are worlds that are ravaged by war for generations. Generations, your lordship. Like the deranged planet by the nameless star. So close to our own peaceful system. 
inhabitants there supposedly live under the patronage of rogue trader Winterscale. I shudder to think what he has created there. Hmm. By the regal Strux. Of course, of course, I would be delighted to furnish you with all the information I bear I have. In the last few months, 15 organized attacks and 7 terrorist attacks have been perpetrated. Irrigation equipment has been sabotaged in aggregation sector 3 to 5. Transport routes to 7, 4, 13 and also... I suppose... I suppose this will not tell you much, please. Uh, my clerk played Spanish, so I can rebels. No logical either campaign, but after analyzing the data and the feet of the terrain, notice a clear system indicating a geographical pattern to their attack. What are you doing to combat the rebels? Our security services are tracking those who support the rebels, and our regulatory wardens are wiping out these saboteurs without the slightest mercy. But they keep on appearing. My scribes have been run off their feet, keeping records of all the public ex hearings and executions, but I am confident that the governor will find a solution soon. Who's directing the rebels? The rebels are well armed and well trained. What's more, the governor's advisors are inclined to think that the instigates of the rebellions are very familiar with the planet's terrain and climate. My ordinates are going through registration records day and night, looking for individuals who have completed military training, but who have so far been unable to identify the scoundrel. What do you think of Vicenta Wyatt? The governor is a superb leader. She possesses an excellent grasp of all matters and never uses an incorrect form for a given situation. I do not pry into her personal affairs, but if I may speak plainly, a lady who fills out paperwork with such finesse cannot be a bad person in my view. Oh, I don't know about that. A new challenge for me? I have yet to find a way off this planet. This confuses and frightens me. As I had really hoped to see if I couldn't maybe get that heavy flamer. Don't mind me, I'm just taking all of this stuff for my own collection. Oh, I can rob the body, of course. Thank you. Ah, there's the way off. Elantek, as you once sought my help, now I am seeking yours. The time has come to dispel the final shadows on our path. I have hidden the truth from you. I know a great deal about those who are disturbing the peace of our local ruler, and I also know where they are hiding. Allow me to show you the way on the condition that you bring me to them. Hmm. Better late than never. Let's go, Elantek. I pray the gods that we are not too late. Well, actually, now that you mentioned that, I kind of want to go back real quick, and uh, I kind of, I was going to go back to my ship, not, uh, not this. This is, uh, this is not what I wanted. This is what I wanted, not why I, what I requested. Hmm. And Alex Adamson says, hmm, she is remarkably agreeable for an elder. I'd expected her to be more of arrogant. I'm going to say it, this one's all right. That is indeed a rather spicy take. All right, woman, I know we agreed to just come down here, but I've got other things to do, so you're going to have to excuse me for a second or two. Several, several loading screens later. Several, several, several loading screens later. Alright, you, fat man. I believe it could be this screen. Hmm. Damn it. It's not. How do I get that heavy flamer? It's not already in my inventory, is it? No. Well, shit on the biscuit. Alright, maybe I need to go back there and collect it. Uh, we'll do that later. Off screen, presumably. 
All right, back down to uh, Governor Wyatt's estate. First we go. Because we have not finished completely exploring this place. Your Lordship, please do not stray too close to the building. One of the terrorists from today's attack has holed himself up there. He could be dangerous. What's going on here? Red report, Your Lordship. We conducted a sweep of the area after attack. All of the assassins were arrested or neutralized except for one. He sealed himself inside. He already injured two wardens who tried to reach him. But there's no need to worry. We'll poison him and clear the last dregs of dirt from the estate. I have only one question, officer. Why have you not already done it? The no traitor is here and the longer you delay, the more you put his life needlessly at risk. It is inexcusable, your lordship. The barrels of poison were only just delivered. But we're, we're ready to begin now. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take care of this myself, don't worry. Are you sure? It's not exactly safe, your lordship. Oh, dare question me? Out of the way. Forgive me, your lordship. Act as you see fit. Good, good. Piss off, you won't take me alive. Better to put a bullet in my brain than let the governor's dogs get their hands on me. Awareness. The door looks solid and formidable, but you notice dark marks on the hinges. A sure sign that the material is degraded. The lock doesn't look new either. With a suitable tool, it could easily be opened. Mm, Alright, Pascal. Pick the lock. You're a piece of shit, Pascal. Coercion. Minus 30. Boy. Aha! The peasant recognizes his superiors. It really is you. Your lordship, have mercy. You are the sovereign of this planet. Only you have the power to save us. Youth is a time for recklessness. I heard that said more than once in the Scholar Progenium and during my novi novitiate. But youth is also a time of directness. Let us listen to this young man before we judge him. Hmm. Save you from what? From Governor Wyatt. Everybody here knows what she's doing to us. We've put up with it for a long time, hoping that somebody would intervene and help us, but nobody ever did. She, she's turned the whole world into a slaughterhouse. People are rounded up like grocs from the settlement, supposedly to go to the palace and then never seen again. Her servants pour something over the fields and then people lose their minds. They start hearing voices and seeing evil spirits. And while we're dying, she's sitting behind her white walls and feasting on our bones. Sacrifices. Madness, pain and death. Even in so primitive a society as this, such rites seem scentless. Not worthy of such efforts. What is this, a random quirk of nature? Or something darker? I was thought, taught that peasants have a tendency to exaggerate their suffering due to the sloth and weakness of spirit. Correct. But this young man, the million thorns pierce every centimetre of his body and grey shackles bind his feet and neck. There are no lies in his words, only terror and desperation without end. Hmm. Seeing evil spirits? Yes, others are going feral and attacking their loved ones. And then there's... People say that in some settlements, well, they've stopped upholding the law altogether. Imperial law and... And the law of basic human decency. People are turning into animals. Your lordship, I beg you, don't ask me that. I can't sell up my brethren. It's over for me, but the others... I won't betray them. Oh, you will. I can be quite persuasive. See? I've never been in the camps, none of us have. Only the chief saw one person on the base. He came a few times, bringing weapons and orders. He said he represented a greater force than we could imagine. And he said that the governor's dogs will pay for the reprisals in their settlements. But that's not where they're hidden. They keep their distance from ordinary folks. We have it all worked out so that if anyone gets caught, the others aren't caught with them. But I swiped the chief's box. I thought after I killed the governor, I could use the message coordinates to find the base and hide out there. Hmm. <laughs> no, no, he's a, he's a good guy. We're gonna save him. Your lordship, thank you. Thank you for this kindness. 
I never thought I'd survive this. Your lordship, I honor your bravery. Please allow me to get rid of this rat for you. This mound is under my protection now. Useful servitor. <laughs> well, it's a good one. Public flaying. Mm, I like it, but you shall have a fair trial. For the deepest respect, your lordship. It, it will be done. A good, honest rebel. See? See, here's the thing. There are countless weaknesses within the peasant. There are almost nothing but, fuck me, weaknesses within the peasant class. They are born slovenly. They are born lowly. They are born disruptive. And they introduce little but disquietude to the universe around them. But even peasants can still have virtue. And that virtue lies in simplicity, in dogma, in their inability, their incapability of viewing things deeper than at the most basic and virtuous element. So long as the peasant is brought up filled with fear of his superiors and an understanding of the swift and unrelenting nature of the repression and the consequences that will he be heaped upon himself and his loved one should he ever stray from the path, then the peasant can be a good way marker for justice. If the peasant is revolted, then you should know that on some animalistic, instinctual level, whatever he is revolted by is bad. A new challenge for me? Secret military base. It's full of secrets. Oh, hey, this is a secret too. It's a, it's a bit of a well-guarded secret, don't you think? Oh, well. State your intention. My intentions is to make you into a purring little kitten. Oh, you meant in the combat. <laughs> well, in that case, it's to make you an assassin, I'm thinking. Um, no, that doesn't make any sense, does it? Now, Bounty Hunter makes more sense. Piercing shot. Piercing armor. Wild Hunt. Need no far seer to we guide are the my future. Of the Imperium. Watching the lazy and sacred I am at your service. You interrupted my doubt is for the week. Do you require an audience? Hmm. And blow his brain out. There we go. Oh boy, that's a frightening quantity of intruders. Huh. Damn, I feel like we should have shot him first. Oh well. Not exactly amazing fields of fire we're uh, blessed with here. And Frank, you know what? I think we're gonna take the slightly more spicy approach. And go up closer. Yes. Yes, I believe so. Me? If you insist, my right, captain. let's see here. 
Rear line. Suits my purposes. Front line. Nothing I can't do. And we'll buff Adel Blood. Eh. An attempt was made. Hmm, we probably don't want to go that far ahead just yet. And doesn't need it again next turn. Hmm. No, no need for that just yet, Argenta. Let's buff your ability to shoot. And I do want to pick that off. Good job. Buff Cassia. Adelbrod is sadly going to be a little bit slow in acting. Hmm. That would be a decent way to protect my flank here, wouldn't it? Yeah, so let's put that right about over there. That's going to complicate their abilities to come and get me and get past Adelbard, and we'll pop another one of their brains open. Let's see if the AI is intelligent enough to not step within the swirling vortex, shall we? Argenta. Hmm. Guided by faith. I'm a bit worried about putting you in the open, I'll admit. Okay, one more shot. Try and deal with that one. Good girl. You missed Meatbag. That's an interesting way to hold that rifle. Jesus. More hand grenades? No. All right, Adelblad, me boy. Follow Let's make you a nice and tempting target for the enemy. Make sure they come over here. Pew. Piercing shot. However, uh, to our protection, that's nice. Should I use that one first? Should I use that one first indeed? <laughs> Smack. Service guaranteed citizenship. Captain Nautier says you need to start using take it down every turn. I remember that ability, I just can't remember what it does. I'm sure it'll come back to me eventually, maybe, possibly. Maybe. It could happen. It's not impossible. Alright, well, they didn't actually, you know, go over here, so... Uh, I want to never get to cast it again. Okay. So... I'll I put it over there. To open up the path for Adelblad to charge through next turn. Splat. All right, Argenta. I feel like I feel like I killed so many of the enemy. There's not really any point in you getting up here, but. A little bit of fire. Still. I don't understand how fire functions in this video game. I'll do it. Make sure you've got rapid fire selected. 
Apparently, the fire does not actually, uh, you know, get around cover as effectively as you would think that fire would. Right, please be in charge range. Thank you. Slap. I've seen worse battles than this in my time. Good boy, Adler. That'll disrupt their rear lines nicely. I approach the designated position. You can't see Diddly Dick, can you? Nope, no, you can't. Pascal. <laughs> As always, you are slightly fat and slightly slow. But you're good enough. Hmm, now what? Forge Can I? No, he doesn't have the thing on him. Suits my purposes. Right, Argenta then. All too easy. Go on. As the Emperor commands. <laughs> eh, you hit him. Good enough. Battlefields are always drowned in scarlet. I'll Again? This is why I was chosen. Yeah. Face without Trudge deeds Street. is worthless. And a Down plonk. And a plunk. Is not the Emperor's no. will. And death. Beautiful. Nice and simple. Dealt with. Flying machines land ahead on a regular basis. It's a little spaceport in the middle of the jungle. Sierra asks, are navigators known to fall to chaos? Uh, not known. They they can, but not known specifically. They're not as bad as unsanctioned psychers, at least. Ooh, that's very Eldar looking. Yep. Alright, so I should probably go down there then. I thought that was the direct path, and that was the way around. No, 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 that can't be it. Let's go this path first, then. And we're going to climb that. Experience? Nothing matters more. Never doubt me. This sort of sap was clearly mauled by a large predator, but you don't see any signs that the creature gorged itself in his flesh afterwards. It appears the beast did not kill this man out of Hi. hunger. It and killed him out of shits service. and giggles. That was barely a challenge. I sense something nearby. What a shame. A touch of she who thirsts. Well, that well, confirms it. We've got ourselves a bit of chaos bumfuckery here. Of the Slaneshi variety. I better myself through my challenge for me. Ah, the rebel reinforcements. I was wondering where they'd gone off to. Ah, uh, yeah, yep, I was about to say, I imagine they encountered some variety of the local wildlife. Oh, yeah, they look very timid and very reticent. I mean, they're enormous, fang mouthed creatures with tentacles and claws. I imagine these are the, uh, you know, the textbook example of a very hesitant and kind and gently creature. Definitely. Definitely all of those things. Definitely. It reminds me of that one Star Trek STD episode with the, the water bear. Where they're like, Oh yes, these creatures are so incredibly harmless. They're so nice. It would never hurt anybody whatsoever. Then it puts half the crew of the spaceship in the ground because it's an angry little Waterbjorn, little Vasabjorn. It is a displeased Vasabjorn. Let's see. Okay, well, that's looking like the front line. I wish I could turn this godforsaken thing. 
buff your accuracy. Buff, 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 buff. And Argento, just kind of keep shooting the giant monster lion there. Das Wasserbjorn is a kind and gentle creature who would never harm anyone except the crew of that stupid spaceship. It would harm those people quite frequently and regularly because Wasserbjorn is angry. Mm, cannot miss. Well, that's cute, but I don't think you're going to be missing these giant things anyway, so... We'll do the perfect shot thing and... Piercing shot. If I must. I am not your Xenos pet, monkey. This oh, you definitely are a Xenos pet. Stop trying, monkey. Hmm, unfortunate, the kitty cast is somewhat in amongst us now. Perhaps we can make the kitty cat less aggressive by bursting its brain out from its anus. Maybe stunning it. God damn it. Well, it was an effort worth making, I suppose. Huh. Well, at least the front line for Adelbard is solid. Smash. You may try to hit me, kitty cats, but it will avail you not. I am far more powerful than you could ever possibly imagine. There we go. Nice and simple. Please expire. End your pathetic lives now. Not later, now. I don't use the diggy weapon much, but mostly because it's kind of shit. As I said, it's kind of shit. Hmm. Adelbrad wonders if he could possibly hit all of you at the same time. Adelbrad doesn't think so, but Adelbrad figured it was worth a moment's notice. Ow. Frontline is looking a pinch more... dangerous. Mark Prey. Do the thing. Make sure we hit it rather than Adelblad. Uh, I was... Oh, that ends her turn, does it? That was, uh... That was not quite what I had in mind, but okie dokie. <laughs> Burn, filthy Xenos pet. All right, Argenta. If you could perhaps, without killing Pascal, zero percent chance. That sounds good to me. Beautiful. I think you heal yourself now. And then you smash. Ah. Such silly animals. I'm trying to take on the glory of House von Falencius. Tisk tisk. They shall expire. That was pointless. As it leaves me without enough action points to actually, you know, do the fully automatic fire that I was intending to do there. There. There we goddamn go. Mr. Sandwich says, please use your heroic actions. No! 
I refuse. Because if I use my heroic actions, I won't have them. Oh. I'm restless. Uh, go rub some ointment Let on Pascal on. there, please. None shall stand in my way. And find yourself another medkit. As if a field of flowers was blossoming. There we are. All right, well, that's sore, but I guess we're going back again then. If I have a use my heroic abilities, I won't have my heroic abilities. It's the uh, have your cake and eat it too, but I prefer having my cake forever and all eternity. My cake is mine to have and own, and it shall never be used, not unless absolutely necessary. Result. I didn't see you there. Let's see. Right. I, have, I have lost. Shit. You'll stay up here as well. Pascal, you'll deal with that. Adelblad. Um, I'm kind of feeling like you should go down the middle there and just draw... <laughs> the maximum quantity of attention you possibly conceivably can. A non-ideal starting position for our uh, engagement. But one deals with what one does. I can kill you in one shot, which means you are a free buff. Which I will take. Good. Lovely. And Sido says, do the leftists say anything about the Imperium, open and active xenophobia, or proud religious intolerance, or will they be happy with female marines? Oh, of course not. No, the, uh, <coughs> the Imperium being intolerant, <coughs> excuse me, is of course the reason why it's bad and why it has to change. Because it is a rampantly bad place, and bad places must be changed for the benefit of people who don't Nothing like bad I places. The rest of us who are capable of looking at a setting and enjoying it for what it is, rather than what our politics demands it should be, we disagree with this. Heavily armed rebel, rebel, Service rebel, guarantees rebel. Citizenship. Hmm. There's quite a lot of the little shits, aren't there? My combat servitor could be dangerous. Sharpshooter rebel. Right. I'll make that the rear line as usual. We don't need a front line at the moment. What to shoot, what to shoot. 37% is not really good enough. Now, yeah, let's pick off a rebel then. Alright, little idiot. Let's, there's not a whole lot of good cover for you to hide behind. At the very least, not good cover that will allow you to shoot out effectively. I suppose that's some variant of cover, so... If I must. Hunker down there. I am not your Xenos pet. And we'll get you another buff as well, I think. If it serves your cause. Nice. And we'll do. I have I have lost. Shit. That. Uh, hmm. hmm. No, I'll just set up the uh, the perfect shot thingy. On the sniper next turn. So I know I can take him out. Cassia, let's see. They've got to come at me from back there. Step aside. The navigator is coming. That's fine. I can pr prepare a very warm welcome for them should they need to do that. So 
Sorry, Pascal, that was not at all what I intended to do. If I may. Poor Pascal. He keeps being the unfortunate recipient of uh, a bit too much friendly fire. Well, so much mine for my cover. But tactically sound. You don't want a lot. You can't. Got him one square away. One fucking square away. Alright, well, fire your pistol whilst you charge. If nothing else, it'll make a hell of a racket. Okay, Pascal. Get down there. Machine Spirit Communion? Oh, can you not? Mm, damn it. Right, it'll help a little bit. We're definitely going to need to use some heroic actions here. The question is where, on who, why, and when? Right, do I've got the high ground covered? I feel like with Pascal and everyone, I've got the high ground around pretty down pat. A little bit hesitant about putting her out in the open there, but screw it. Hmm. Power Firearms mastery. I'll do it. Let's pick some of them off. Hundred percent hit chance. Very nice. And one more. As the Emperor commands. And one more. I'll do it. There you go, that reduces him quite nicely. We can then do a Furious Recycle to boost ourselves up. I'll do it. Make sure we've got that active and she's ready for the next round. That's a melter gun. Oh, God. Right, suddenly, I am uh, reconsidering my decision to place her in quite that much in the open. And Pascal is on, like, zero points. Wow, impressive. That, uh, that kind of keeps happening to poor Pascal, doesn't it? Poor Pascal. Hmm. Alright, Pascal, let's see, uh, does your, does your thing, no, it didn't, actually. Uh, let's see, if I do that, will you hit me? You will, won't you? Yes, you will, you piece of shit. Uh, well. Hmm. Ooh, okay. Well, I wasn't aware of that. Dangerous. Dangerous. Sniper ran for it. Nothing I can't do. Good. Let's make that the Already front done. line. Give Pascal all of the damage reduction he can get. He's going to need it. Right. Uh, not a bad hit. Let's keep stacking up those bonuses. Lots of temporary wounds, lots of nice shit. Thank you. We're still hunkered down. Pacing shot. Only pacing shot and we'll set up another attack on the sharpshooter because he's still kind of difficult hit. we got today then if i go over there can i see I off the precipice against the bad people i hope so eh, not as well as i was hoping but it's eh, something isn't this a job for the serfs well he's on ethereal fire so good enough 
Adelblad so far has not actually really had an opportunity to do much, which is a pinch unfortunate. Hmm. That rebel? That rebel. Great hair. Sure hair. One down in a moment. Rip and roll, rip and tear. Lovely, lovely. And we'll send you up the stairs to that guy next turn. Pascal, you're still not feeling very well, I'm imagining? Lick some of the blood off him. I'm sure that'll work out. Free attack. Why, yes. Right. You may uh, stay there and die. Don't worry about it. I'm sure our... Ah, there we go. It is actually Argenta's turn. God okay. Argenta. Try and keep our bulwark there on his feet, if at all possible. Thank you very much. Ready the full Faith auto and slap in a worthless. new magazine whilst you're at it. Oh no! Zero point something poison damage. Whatever shall I do? Still worried about that combat servitor. Heavy Weapons Trooper is down. 38%, which really doesn't feel like that much. God, I wish you could buff your own accuracy. That would be really, really rather useful. Suits my purposes. Well, if aiming doesn't actually make any difference, we might as well just do that. And Cassia. I don't see how my eye can't reach down there, but, you know, well, video game says it can't, so we shall accept the video game's judgment on this matter. Damn it, 66%. Piece of shit. If it serves your cause, no weakness is hidden from my sight. I like that ability to just call a shot for next turn. That's a really good ability, and I'm loving it. But I wish it did a little bit more damage. I'm not accustomed to being <laughs> Come on, it's just a combat servitor. Oh, apparently. Okay. He can't have that much brain power to fry. You fired your weapon at a servant of the Von Valencia's dynasty for the last time, filth. Die. Turn to giblets, in fact. Pascal. Now that you've got hit points again. Splash. You do gotta love the sheer damage that a nice, big, solid two-hander can do, don't you? You know, Rebels, I believe you when you say that you're the good guy, so... If you could just, you know, stop shooting at me, we could all be friends. That should guarantee that he dies next turn. You could just surrender, I'll accept it, I did surrender one of your people already. And if you just give up, we can be buddies, but no. We gotta keep on fighting each other for... ...reasons. Ah, the truly bad guys. The Eldar Voyeurs. Disgusting. With their... Really, really, really ridiculously high dodge chance. God help me. Two percent. Somehow I feel like it's not really gonna be worth it wasting any ammo on those. That guy's dead anyway, so I don't need to worry about that. Argenta. That little bolter trinket of yours is gonna come in handy. Very handy. Not a for me. 
Unfortunately, my sniper isn't actually very good at sniping things. I need to, like, redo my character and just give him, like, nothing but ballistic skill. That seems to be the sensible thing to do. Nice one. Not quite good enough, but nice one, nevertheless. If it serves your cause. And prepare to pick him off next turn. If I must commit genocide against my own kind, I suppose I'll have to. Ow. more. There's a lot of them. I feel like they should panic a little bit with the arrival of, you know, Xenos monstrosities behind them or something, but uh, no, no, apparently they don't really care too much about that. Ten percent of the targets parry. I don't know if their parry is actually all that good necessarily, but I'm just gonna carve my way through this little piece of shit. Because their dodge is what's really nasty. Well, fuck you too then. There we go. I guess I can get one hit on on him. That combat servitor could still be a problem, but Pascal will handle him. Seriously, shoot at the Xenos monstrosities! Right, so you're already slated to be dead, so I don't need to worry about it. Instead, we'll just pump up. There you go. Beautiful. Actually, I should have moved you first. That was silly. Right, never mind, let's see. Can we get anything else with run and gun? We can possibly. Yes, we can! Boom. Very nice, Argenta. Very nice. Oh, God, help me. Is there going to be more of them? Or is the game just going to crash? Hmm. Uh, Paul Damock says, Arch, dear sweetheart, my favorite disgusting mortal, have you ever considered that you are failing to gatekeep Dev from the Archcast? No. Garanto, the heroic action reset every combat. Please use them. No, no, they, they've got the little bar thingy. Little bar thingy, see? you got to build up the bar. you got to keep the bar going. The bar must keep going. I wonder, if I do that, does that make her do the cold shot immediately? No, it does not. Well, that's most unfortunate. Tragic, actually. I wonder if you could build up multiple shots doing that. Hmm. Interesting. Bullseye. You cannot force me. Oh wait, that happened immediately, did it? Huh. If it serves your cause. Alright, we must be running out of enemies by now, surely. If I may. Isn't this a job for the serfs? Duck, Pascal. You are about to be in tremendous danger, sir. My place is at the fork. See, Dev's a good little child. He's good. I like Dev. Dev is merely wrong on certain things. Dev has a very large problem with seeing patterns. That's... That's Dev's largest problem. He refuses to acknowledge that patterns even exist. Yeah, smacky. Yeah. Hmm. Come 
Come on. Slow momentum. Why will you not die? Because I am a mechanical man. And hitting me with a sword, frankly, is not very useful. Alright, Cassia, you seem to be the one getting most damage through it, so just... There you go, good girl. Good grill. A fine grill you are. I swear on Cain's riven heart, Mwaran, you will pay for your treachery. May Morag Hag sunder your fate and cast it away. May the blood of Eldenish flood your throat. Well, well, who knew a tempest were to me that unruffled surface? Kitty cat got claws. <laughs> you never know, closes her eyes. Please excuse me, Alantak. I allowed the turmoil and my soul to win out over my reason. A slip like that could cost me more than you can even imagine. My very soul. I must be careful. Even in the face of Tetri. Who is Muaran? Muaran is the one responsible for the rebellion against the ruler of Yarnas. But allow me to tell you everything f Oh my god, I- Again! I was born! Another tale of I was born- Oh my- uh, My god, why could you not voice these? Voice act the I was born tales. We call ourselves the children of Assyrian. Ildari is another name of ours, the copyright friendly one. Eldar is the normal one. We are the echoes of the great empire that once ruled the galaxy and created new worlds. The planet that you call Yarnus is one such maiden world. The Liathan, a haven that our ancestors made for their kin. For many millennia, only the shadows of our predecessors lived amongst the ruins until you humans came here. We are their heirs. And we are entirely within our rights to call the Maiden World our own. However, our arrival is a tragedy, not a homecoming. We belong... belong to Craftwall Crud, which fell on the border of the Star Region. Only the providence of the merciful god allowed us to escape the fate that befell those whose soul perished amidst the stardust along with our abode. Destroying an Eldari Craftwall is a serious achievement. I'd like to shake the hand of whoever did it. Which border exactly? You don't need to know that, Iron Monkeg. I am aware of your looting practices. After that calamity, the Eliathan offered my kin a sanctuary, a place of respite in the ruins of our ancestors, under the canopy of the forests created by the wisdom of our world singers, living alongside your kind who reap the fruit of our labour with such vulgarity. <coughs> ah, you came to with the rest of the elder? <laughs> Him. No, my path brought me to Liathan later, by another route. <coughs> it was Muran who welcomed me here. He was one of the surviving farseers of Crud. He was a handful of Azeriani who had escaped death and found a path here to the destroyed cradle of our kind. They were outraged when they saw how the Mon Keg had ravaged our flourishing garden. Why did our own kind attack you? I know not the answer to that question. Many cycles have passed since I departed. These forests are my kin. They cannot, they cannot have forgotten me, can they? How are they connected to the uprising? The Asiriani do not enter battles they cannot win. Well, we'll see about that. However, it is in our power to direct the current so that the elements themselves wash obstacles and enemies from our path. And so it was in this case. Muratan, the Farseer from Crud, saw a future without the monkey and allowed his and f followed his lead we simply use the monkeys passion against them their love of freedom and anarchy their love of dom domination and violence stalking enmities between the servants and rulers is easier when your targets are governed by emotion rather than reason my kin became military advisors to the monkey who rose up against the rulers of this world. I had a different mission, to become Vistensa's handler, since the rebels would be unable to get her until both sides were sufficiently weakened. The ruler of the humans had never seen a child of Syrian before, and so she accepted a lie about the degenerate branch of monkey dwelling far from their own kind. Hmm. You struggle to understand the children of Assyrian, and I do not blame you for that. We are too different. Monkey walk blindly into the future. We choose the path, guided by our farseer, Crud. Was the birthplace of the powerful watchers of things to come. Our leaders were selected from among their ranks, and their world was set in stone, unshakable like the universe itself. Warren, our leader here, is one of that group. The children of Assyrian are subject to his will, and he is subject to the will of his visions. Warren saw the Lilathan in a vision, suffering and crying out to be cleansed, 
and we did everything we could to rid the maiden worlds of the monkey. Our lives, our desires, all have, that I is dust lost. compared to the light of the path Mwaran has chosen for us. At last, that is what my kin believed. I used to believe until recently. And Antak, your arrival has thrown my path into disarray and lifted the veil on the truth that had hidden from me. While I was shadowing the human ruler, I failed to see the signs. Signs that there was another threat looming over the Liathan, besides the monkey deeds. The threat should be familiar to you as it is to other intelligent species in the galaxy. We call it Sayel Lantresh, she with thirsts, goddess of chaos. Indeed. Disfigurement, it seems, you call these mutations, are the surest signs of this threat. By mutilating living forms, this malevolent power subjugates them and bends them to its will. You have seen the defamation in the face of those who are closer to the Liliathan's body than others, the rebels who hide under the canopy of the forest. The monkey are weak in spirit. They are susceptible to the propositions of she who thirsts, and in their drive to attain her poisoned gifts, they perform perverse rituals in her name, rituals that require sacrifices, like the monkey who were brought to the palace and never seen again. The Liliathan's world spirit senses the threat and resists as much as it is able. The living things that inhabit this world are becoming its weapons, weapons turned against the monkey, poisonous plants, rabid beasts. These are all like a blade in the Lilathan's hands as she fights in the coming of Slanesh. The signs that have been revealed to me, they are all indicative of the presence of corruption. On this world, tendrils of corruption may be threading through the world spirit, poisoning it even as we speak. But for corruption to take hold on a planet so quickly requires effort, effort directed by the will of another. I believe Vicenza Viet is enthralled to the will of Slanesh. What? Vicenza Viet, the governor who has duly served the dynasty and the Imperium for decades, his supreme glorious greatness, Sir Art of Terror, I hope you will not stand for such scurrilous slander aimed at one of your finest servants. As lamentable as it may be, the Imperium's history knows many cases where even the most steadfast followers of the Creed would turn away from his light. Governor Wyatt had to tap into the many founts of knowledge to turn Yannis into a prosperous agri-world. Perhaps one of those founts became her undoing. Ah, the lesson. The lesson reveals itself. Women are always evil. And Paul Damick, whenever Dev opens his mouth, you can see the wheels turning, but the hamster is dead. I wonder what he thinks about Space Man and Marines. <laughs> I'm sure he thinks they're silly as well, because Dev is a good little boy when treated correctly. Hmm. Maybe Vicenta is tainted from consorting with the arch enemy. We will have to find out for ourselves. Perhaps the signs I uncovered have failed to convince you. I pray to the gods that other proof, something more comprehensible to you, will emerge to sway your opinion. Salanatus deceitfulness is cunning. She subtly, she subtly penetrates the soul, offering false perfection, luring victims into her womb with promise of wicked ideal. The ruler of the monkey perhaps does not even know that her soul has been corrupted. Want to meet with the leaders of the uprising? We better keep moving. Victory awaits. Ah, filthy, rebel, biagotry, around every corner. Unending, unceasing. This ocular implant was a worthwhile investment. You left the novice imperialis to serve the rogue trader. Do you ever regret it, Seneschal? No, I do not regret it in the least. Serving in the Imperial Navy is a fine thing to do. But it was only under Lady Theodora that I truly felt the significance of what I was doing. Follow my lead! That, and he really, really wanted to be used as a private sex toy. You know, just pointing it out. You did thirst after that, Theodora hairdo quite frantically and frankly a little bit mm, unsuitably as well it does not do for a inferior to lust so viciously and violently after their superiors 
Such office romance can only ever end in Attention terrible, detail, terrible, physics, terrible physics. failure. There must be equality within the power structures of a relationship, otherwise it will inevitably fail to be dashed upon the rocks of jealousy and other such disgusting things. It is inevitable. A relationship that is not equal is no relationship at all. Unless one party has a fetish for being, you know, incredibly submissive and treated like a general issue toy, that is, which does happen on occasion, but it too is a rarity. Any more pretty little loot bits? No. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, well, not reachable from here. Alright, Agenta, try not to step on this pressure plate. Thank you. Oh. Law Xenos. The trap was a Xenos test. Didn't see that one coming. Uh, please heal yourself. Is that a... Apparently. My success was inevitable. You see, we Eldar make weird minds, unnatural minds, filled with all manners of homosexuality. Experience. Watch your stats. Nothing matters more. You would not believe the disgusting things we put in our minds. You would uh, better not touch them. You you wouldn't understand just how terrible. That's a naval service. That was barely a challenge. Victory away. something nearby hmm a hole like that was gonna lead left by a thin blade oh well I wonder indeed what could possibly have done such a thing perhaps a shuriken catapult oh but that would be a long shot wouldn't it no not really all right I think we will wrap it there, as we've got the boss fight against the Eldar, and then the evil woman left to go, which is probably another hour, two hours of stuff. So I'm going to listen to my growling stomach and go prepare to eat the delicious pastry I put out of the fridge earlier. Yes, yes. Plus, I'm getting sweaty. See? It snowed like a meter of snow over here, and so I had to increase the heating, and now the heating is too much, and now I'm sad. It's either too cold or too warm in Norway, never anywhere in between. Anywho, thank you all for watching today. Thank you for your uh, incredibly do generous donations, especially uh, Warmaster Fenrir. And again, remember, everyone who participated in the donor war, uh, send me a message on Discord or on Twitter, and I'll get you a little rat brick for you, a little custom avatar. Until next time, I have been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching and for your generous donations, which I think I already said, but that's the problem with a pre-canned outro. It's pretty much automatic until you forget whether or not you actually did it. Good night.